Uh, welcome to TT Boy TV. We're live, and we have a special guest, one of the most intelligent and the most successful porn agents in the world. Please welcome, nice guy, Mark Spiegler. Thank you. <laughs> How you doing today? So far, so good, but nothing's happened yet. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's all good. Yeah, nothing crazy yet. Nothing. Today is relatively quiet. Cause we know. So tell me. I mean, any day could be a hurricane, huh? Oh yeah. Uh, cancellations. This girl got sick. That one got in a fight with that one. Uh, when I used to have a lot of them living at my house, fires, car crashes. Oh yeah, all kinds of stuff. Uh, yeah. 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 It's like a uh, reality show, huh? It definitely could be. Why didn't you ever put the cameras up? Make Somebody them? actually uh, did a pilot for HBO. But that was like, I'd say in the late 90s. It might have been a little too uh, racy for them at the time. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, a few years ago, it would have been perfect, huh? Yeah, now, yeah. Or now. Yeah. Yeah. So how's the agency going? We're doing pretty good. We, uh, you know, we only take a select few number of girls, so we don't take a ton. I mean, we, we've had a record year last year, and our business has gone up every single year we've been in business but one. Wow, I was going to ask you about that. That's one of my questions way down the line, but all those years, I was wondering, so ups and downs, only one one down? Yeah, and that was actually the year uh, um, Mr. Marcus, you know, had syphilis and they had to shut everything down for like a month. Yeah. It wasn't Marcus's fault, was it? Well, kind of. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Yeah. Well, he's, I like Marcus, so we can't. No, I like him. I, I saw him two days ago. Yeah. Three days ago, yeah. So how many years have you had the agency? Well, I mean, the, uh, officially, I started as an agent in 1999, but I was helping girls get work before that. And... Uh, the first time I was ever on a set was 1985. Oh, yeah? Wow. Yeah. That's way back. With Roy Karch. Oh, I love Roy. Yeah. So, um, you know, he went, to, I met him because he went to school, with, uh, or he grew up with my cousin in New York. And so, oh, this guy directs porn. To the, I went to a few sets, like as a PA, helped him. You know, I wanted to see porn being made. Yeah. That was in the 80s. Then... You know, in the 90s, he came to me to borrow money to shoot. He was working at Gourmet Studios. And back then, you could shoot your own productions and sell it to companies. And he came to me to borrow money to shoot movies. And that's kind of how I got into business. I lent him money to shoot movies. We produced them, sold them. Then other people came to me to borrow money. And I started, you know, producing a bunch of movies. And then I got to know all these girls and they knew I was shooting, and they'd be calling all the time, hey, can you hire me? Can you? And I knew other producers, so they would like, I'm like, I'm not shooting, but this one is, and I'd help them get work. And I was doing that for free for a few years, and it got to be a lot of work, so I made a business out of it. That's worked pretty good since. Yes, it has. <laughs> yeah. Roy Cards, man. I heard he's not doing it, that well right now. I had like a stroke, and I guess he's like in a... Like a hospice care place, yeah. Uh, I always liked him. He's a cool guy. You get along with him? Yeah, I mean, especially at the beginning. I knew him for years before I got into porn. Of course, once I started shooting movies without him, uh, he started calling companies, telling them not to buy my movies. So then oh, I shit. had a little bit of a problem. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's no good. Eh, I'm still here. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, so you were on the set working as a PA. How was it, what was it like back then? That's 1985, no, man. I, well, the, the first time, I remember, you know, porn wasn't even legal. No. I remember um, back then, it was, you know, somewhat like Boogie Nights where you wouldn't know what you were shooting or where. Everybody met, like, at a Ralph's parking lot, and there'd be a lighting truck, and then you'd go. And I remember the first movie... Uh, it was like family something or other. It was shot at a bar in uh, Ventura County. It had Herschel Savage, Peter North, Buffy Davis. And so, and, you know, I wanted to see porn being made. And then the next one was uh, up in Laurel Canyon. The next time I... But hold on, sorry. So the first one you go to, you see Peter North there? Yeah. Peter. And I mean, he's like an X-Man, don't you think? Yeah. And, right? and Herschel, I mean, I was a porn, you know, but back then you had to go basically to the movies. Yeah. You had to watch. Oh, you were a porn fan? Yeah. All right. Yeah, I mean, I, the first real porn I saw was um, 
Devil and Miss Jones and uh, Behind the Green Door in the Marilyn 70s. Chambers, right? Yeah. And um, back then, I lived near the Pussycat Theater in Hollywood. Oh, yeah? And when I was, yeah. So when I was a kid, we would wait for people to come out the back door into the alley, and we'd sneak in. Like kid, like how old? Sheesh. Huh. Uh, well, when Behind the Green Door came out, I think I was like 13 or 14. Yeah, because that was like what? 71 or 72. 72 yeah. yeah. Wow, that must have been kind of, because not too much is out back then. No, and, and like I said, if you wanted to see porn, either you'd go to a magazine stand and get like an old black and white like newspaper with little naked pictures in it, or maybe Playboy magazine or whatever. But um, if you actually wanted to see porn, you had to go to a movie theater. Yeah, it was so much more, people were so much more modest back then. <laughs> yeah, right? nobody wanted anybody to see them going in either, yeah. No, oh, but I mean, I heard stories. Linda Lovelace, the you know, Deep Throat, right? Yeah. I think I read a book about her, whatever, some information about her, and everybody wanted to try Deep Throat out because nobody did it, right? And that was the first breakthrough. It was kind of a breakthrough in the mainstream. Johnny Carson was talking about yeah, it. Yeah, right? And this and that, yeah. So, so it became a big deal, yeah. You think, it, I mean, somebody's... I thought maybe that they were hustling because Butchie, you ever meet Butchie? No. Right, so, I know Perino, yeah. yeah, Butchie Pirano was the producer, director. No, Damiano, director. I worked with Damiano yeah. before, but Butchie produced it. But I heard that maybe, I mean, that's what I heard, maybe they paid off Johnny and they got the information going. He went down there in, some, in New know, York and stuff like that to watch it. It became a big deal in mainstream period, you know? Yeah. I think she was even on the uh, Tonight Show. So, you know, back then. Really? But, I mean, it was a big deal. And then and uh, behind the green door, Marilyn Chambers, she was one of the first girls, I think she got a percentage. Really? Of, of, yeah. Of, Ivory Snow Girl. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. But uh, she made a fortune off of that herself, which most girls never did. Right, I didn't know that, really. Yeah. Wow. So, so Linda Lovelace, right from what I hear, maybe you know this, a lot of people wanted to try it out, right? Like I was saying earlier. So supposedly, supposedly, Sammy Davis, uh, Johnny Carson, a lot of people, Hugh Hefner, a lot of people wanted to see this. Is what people got to understand, Deep Throat was made by Gerard Damiano, the idea. Yeah. Right. He saw her do it. You know, I read the information. He saw her do it. And he said, that's Deep Throat. He wrote the script and boom, they have this $600 million movie, right? One of the highest grossing motion pictures, period. Of all of time. Of all time, yeah. It, was, it did so well. I heard that Hollywood, you know, mainstream studios, approached Gerard Damiano and Butchie. That's what I had heard. But, you know, I wasn't there. <sighs> but anyways, that's interesting, right? So back then you get to walk in there and see this stuff. It must have been really, these movies must have been really exciting. Yeah, I mean, it was a, you know, like I said, it, First of all, porn was not accessible whenever you wanted it. And like I said, I would have to sneak in. I wasn't old enough to go. But I used to walk past the Pussycat Theater on Santa Monica on my way to school every day. Did they have posters up on yeah, the side? Yeah, but they always had the little nipples covered with uh -huh. stars and stuff. But um, so we wanted to go. We'd have to try and wait in the alley till somebody came out and sneak in the back door. That must have been fun. Yeah, it's okay. I mean, I love porno. I was a big porn fan, you know. So I mean, you see Peter North and Herschel Savage. You see Peter North let off the X Man hose. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that? Yeah. Did you say what That's the? That's what he's famous for. Yeah. yeah. What the hell is that? That's crazy, right? And then he and uh, then in the early like earlier seventies, my cousin worked um, installing VCRs in P before there was home VCRs uh -huh. in like movie stars homes and executives and stuff and he got a copy of Deep Throat behind the green door what? so then I could actually see them at home what year was this it was okay I remember the the home VCR came out 75 really so is that a beta or a VCR the, the very first Betamax beta the one Max. hour so it was before that. So I'd say like 73. Really? Then, yeah, because I could watch, he got copies of it. It was on three quarter inch tape, I think, oh, or one wow. inch tape. And I could watch him at home. Wow. So you started watching movies? When, I what, mean, not my home. You oh, know, it's yeah. his home. It was his machine. How, how yeah. old are you? 
then 16 maybe 15 16 16 so that's beautiful right that's i mean really kids are watching porn now at 12 or 13 whether people want to admit it or not yeah i was i I stole my father's magazines when i was five no like i said i remember i used to go to the the newsstand steal like it was like black and white like newspaper cut out little pictures and sell sell them to the other kids at school really all right my wallet yeah already doing business huh (laughs) <laughs> that's cool so you grew up in Hollywood or yeah I was born in what's now Silver Lake um, and then I grew up in um, the edge of Beverly Hills till I was like six or seven and then was West Hollywood now oh so, how was West Hollywood back then it was I mean to me it was just home I grew up on um, Curson in Santa Monica and then later moved to like um, like near Fairfax and Sunset that's where I really grew up I mean, that's like, I mean, Hollywood has all the movie stars, has everything going on. I mean, you know, not everybody's in Hollywood, right? So back then, it's got to be more um, mysterious, but you're part of it, so it's not mysterious, but you see movie stars running around? Well, I mean, the school I went to when I was really young was called Hollywood Professional School, and it was a school that was built for the movie stars by the studio system. Judy Garland and all these... You know, you, it was built by the studios. You could go from 8 a.m. to noon and then go from there to the studio to work in movies. So there was a lot of, like, you know, Beach Boys and Peggy Lipton from the Mod Squad and uh, Peggy Fleming. You know, there was a lot of actors and actresses went there. And you were at that school? Yeah, wow. till from first to fifth grade. Oh. Then my mom couldn't afford it anymore, and then I went to public school. All right. Yeah. Oh, that's, that must have been pretty trippy. It's okay. Yeah. I mean, it's good because when mainstream people call me up now and I have this mainstream, and I go, I don't really care. I grew up in this stuff, and to me, it's not a big deal. And, you know, they dangle, oh, it's mainstream in front of the girls, but that doesn't really mean anything. You know, I've had girls in, like, really big, like, um, Sex in the City, Drive. Just, it doesn't make them any more money. It doesn't make, you know, unless they're the lead in the movie, it doesn't really yeah. matter. Right. They, they really use it. Used to hang it above them. Today, it seems like the quality or there's too much quantity. What do you see today with Hollywood? Well, also, first of all, they have approved all these low-budget films that yeah. SAG approves where, you know, I'll say, how much does it pay? And they're like, oh, well, we have a, you know, exception from SAG and we could pay $100. And like, no, you know, even $500, I'm not going to bother. And these girls... You know, most of our girls sit around and make, you know, $1,000 a day. You know, some of them might be excited about mainstream, mainstream, but normally I, I don't really care. Yeah. I mean, it's great if you get a great lead role, like you say, in a nice big budget movie. That's a dream. But Yeah, no, Sasha Gray did the uh, uh, girlfriend experience with, um, um, gosh, I forget to do I mean, she was like the lead in the movie with uh, uh, Steven Soderbergh directed it, and right. she was the lead in the movie. Okay. That's a big deal. Yeah. But other than that, no. That was your girl? Yeah. Sasha Gray? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I never I never met her, but I heard she was pretty nasty. Oh, yeah. It's just, I mean, I still see her, you know, occasionally. Yeah. I see a lot of the girls still. Oh, yeah? They love yeah. you? Yeah. <laughs> One day, they love you the next day, huh? Yeah, I mean, I, still, I, mean, I met her. She emailed me one, one month after she turned 18. And uh, and she's like thirty three now. And I still talk to her. Oh yeah. Yeah. Cool. So you grew up in Hollywood. Your parents, if you don't mind, they grew. They escaped the yeah the Holocaust. My, my father um, grew up in Austria. He was born in Poland, but grew up in Austria. And when Hitler was when came into power in nineteen thirty three. He, I guess it was way before, you know, he came into Austria, but my father left and he joined the, um, uh, the RAF in North Africa well before World War II. My mother was younger. She was um, arrested by the Nazis when she was like 16, her and her mother. She escaped, got to England, uh, joined uh, the Army, the Allied Territorial Service, ATS, and and served, you know, during World War II there. My father served in North Africa. They didn't know each other, and then they both moved to New York eventually and met there. Whoa, that's a trip, right? Yeah. So how did she escape? I have no idea. I mean, the funny thing is my parents never really talked about this stuff. Uh Then um, 
after Steven Spielberg made Schindler's List, Great movie. he started this thing called the Shoah Project where they filmed Holocaust survivors. And they came to our house and recorded my mother. That's the only time I ever heard her really talk about anything. Wow, no and shit. And even then, you know, not that much, but yeah. So she she escaped, her mother was killed. You know, all, all the grandparents were killed. Um, but she escaped, was adopted by a British family when she was 16, 17, she joined the army and that was it. That's amazing, man. I mean, incredible she got away. That's that's really some weird, I mean, yeah. not, not weird, but it's a terrible situation. But yeah, it's strange how some people survived, you know? You know, your father saw this ahead of time? Did he tell you that? No, like I said, they didn't really talk about it, oh, okay. ever. If he would have been able to see the head, that would have been great. I'm sure yeah. he saw, you know, like when Hitler was elected in 1933, he left Europe. So he saw it. Yeah. You, did you ever meet Sidney Niekirk? No, but the name is familiar. Cal Vista? No, no, okay, I know the name, yeah. You know, and he, they had a foreign rights company, too. Okay. Mach 2 or something, right? He was in Amsterdam, right? And the day before he left, the next day they were chasing him, his family down. They had the list. And so he, him and his family stayed in a tunnel underground for two years on a farm. That's what my, my mother, which I didn't know until you know, my mother's mother was hiding out in a barn on a farm until they, they eventually caught her. They, caught her. they used to take the machine guns and shoot it into the dirt. <laughs> And he said, he, at this point, he said, I really don't care because go ahead, kill me. I'm sick of eating potato pills underground. But yeah, it's pretty crazy. Huh? Oh, yeah, and they took her to a concentration camp where she died. Yeah. Oh, terrible. So, so you, what type of parents did you have? Well, I mean, what, what, were they um, liberal? They're nice? They they're... were pretty liberal. Uh, like, you know, uh, yeah, they're pretty liberal for, I mean, they're European, so they were, they were pretty liberal. And, uh, you know, my mom, was like a, you know, one of the people that uh, developed West Hollywood, you know, as a city. She was in charge of rent control and this and that when it became a city, you know. But my parents got divorced when I was 16. Didn't see my father a lot after that, you know, here and there. But my mother, you know, I saw her till you know, she died in like 97. How old was she? Uh, 73. Your father still alive? Oh, no, no, he oh. died. My father was born in 1912. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. That's a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. Huh, that's... Wait, wait, 70... My, my mother... No, my mother died in 97, 97. Yeah, 97. Were they strict with you for school and stuff like that? No. Oh. I, they, you know, uh, I think my mother... My parents were kind of a little ahead of time. They, they never... First of all, they never hit me. But uh, also, they talked to me like an adult ever since I was a little kid. I think they believed you don't do baby talk. You know, you talk, because then it's kind of like learning a language, and then you have to learn another language. So <laughs> they spoke to me like a little adult ever since, you know, the beginning. So everything is pretty yeah. down the line. Yeah, and, they're, you know, they just tell you how it is, and that's it. So they must have saw, obviously, after seeing all that stuff, the, the value or perception of life is much different than anybody else's, you know, that hadn't experienced something like that. Yeah, because, I mean, if you think about World War II, my mother was, in, like, in London during the bombings and stuff, and, you know, people are there, and then they're gone, you know, or yeah. or they're there, and they're ruined for life, you know, so. Yeah, you might think life is so easily taken away that you might... Be nicer to people. I don't you know. Might, yeah, think about it, yeah. yeah. And that might be what makes them liberal, too. Yeah, maybe, yeah. right? Because why be so restricted, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyways, so um, I just want to make sure we get your agency name correctly before we go on. Say it for me. It's just Spiegler Girls Incorporated. Okay. Spiegler Girls Inc. Okay. Yeah. So I remember when you um, you gave me a business card, <laughs> right? I don't know if you remember. It's on Reseda Boulevard. Probably, I thought 2002 or three, and you said I ha I'm starting an agency or I have an agency. You just started, really, you know, professionally. Okay. You said 99, and I gotta let you know that you really um, surprised me. <laughs> you know, because you really, you know, are a top agent and it's strong and intelligent. So I just want to congratulate you on your success. Thanks. I mean, I don't remember giving you the card, but okay. Yeah, you know, did did we know each other? 
I've seen you here and there. I mean, I don't think you ever worked for me, like when I was shooting movies, mm -hmm. but you were probably at Gourmet Studios a bunch of times. Remember Rob Spallone's Yeah, but, Yeah, I, I don't think they had the budget because I always used to charge no, no, a good but I've seen you around yeah. everywhere, yeah. They had a studio. Yeah, like people shot in okay. it. Okay. Uh, in North Hollywood. Uh, was that the Magnolia studio or no? no? That that was uh, Milton's. Yeah, Mel, Mel Mingley and then yeah. Bobby Gallagher. No, it was in right in Van Nuys, right off of like between Woodman and Coldwater, just north of uh, Sherman Way. I mean, I know I knew you because you know. No, where, yeah. Where the hell did we see each other? But also, like I like I said back then, you know, now everybody says there's no money in porn and there's a party every week. Back then there was. Tons of money, but there's only like four parties a year. But you would see everybody there, you know? So maybe there too, but no, nah, I see you around. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I knew you when I talked to you. Yeah. You know? I mean, I was all around, whatever, but... So did you see a lot of drugs on the set, especially... How long were you on the set in the 80s? Because that's where the drugs were, right? That's what I was going to say. You'd see more drugs on the set easily in the 80s than now. What did you see? Cocaine? Yeah, coke. Everybody was smoking weed. Uh, yeah, there was no like meth or anything like that. I'd say mainly coke and drinking. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. You know that I never seen any drugs on the set. I, I mean, not even in the eighties. No, I never seen any drugs. They're like, where's the drugs? Now you don't see it. I mean, people are smoking weed a lot. Yeah, weed is not a drug. I don't. Yeah, but uh, I mean, and you know, we drug test our girls. So you what? We drug test. Oh yeah. Yeah. But tell me about that. That's pretty uh, uh, deep. You know what I mean? Well, because I don't care about weed either. But yeah. if they're doing real drugs, eventually they're not going to show up. And our girls are known for like being really professional. Um, you know, show like I've been doing this officially since I think '99, and we've only had three girls ever not show up for a job ever. Yeah, and if anybody knows the adult business. That's a miracle in itself. Yeah. But no, the girls know that we're pretty strict about this stuff. And that I made a lot of money before porn. So I'm not relying on the, you know, I give most of this money away. And oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Give it, it away? Yeah. <laughs> People in the business kidding. know. But really? What do you get? You made money before. I made money as what they call a day trader now. Uh, uh -huh. You know, uh, my degree is in economics, but I traded stocks even before there was PCs and I made a lot of money doing that and that's how I got money that I lent to people to start producing porn and uh, so got this guy George that works with me uh, he gets to keep all the Spiegler girls money he was my personal banker before and he kept asking me to give him a job so one day back late 90s early 2000s you know, we had to drive all the girls and this, you know, now there's Uber or whatever. So uh, he kept asking me for a job. So one day I walked into the bank and go, you want a job? Okay, you start tomorrow. So you were a day trader. Can you explain that to me? Yeah, it was what they call a day trader now. There was no, like, expression for it, I guess, at the time. But back then you literally had to call a broker, physically call a broker and talk to them and buy and sell. And um, so, like... In the late 80s, like, for example, 87, when the market crashed, I had been watching Apple Computer, which was at $56 or so a share. The day the market crashed, it dropped to 29 bucks. They had $38, $36 in cash in the bank, property, no debt. It was like, you can't lose. But they had how much in the bank? $36 a share in cash, right. plus property okay. and okay. assets. But everybody's freaking out because of the, you know, so the stock went from $56 to 29 and 3 eighths. It took me two days to get a broker on the phone. But I bought, like, Apple Computer at 29 and 3 eighths and made a lot of money on that, too. How many shares did you buy? A lot. 1,000 shares? Oh, more than that. 10,000 shares? Uh, really? A lot, yeah. Wow, okay. So I made, I made a lot of money on other stuff, too. So you your days as a stockbroker made you a lot of money? Yeah, and then... I had retired, like I didn't have to work, and then I got into this first by lending people money to shoot movies. Um, I don't know if you know Mike Quasar. Yeah, yeah and, worked for Zero Tolerance. Right, so like when I was shooting with um, Roy Karch, 
And Roy was mainly in the makeup room talking to the girls, you know, the whole time. So uh, I, I said to him, you know, why am I paying you? These guys are shooting a movie. I went up to McCormick, hey, you want to shoot some movies? And other people, and I put up the money. So I produced movies for about four years. I uh, produced some for David Christopher. But my Quasar was, what year was this? That was, he started in the early 90s. But he, yeah, like the first uh -huh. movie I shot with uh, Roy Karch, uh, Mike Quasar was the PA. Oh, okay. Then the next one, he was a camera guy. Barry Wood was a camera guy back then. Oh, Barry Wood was great, yeah. yeah. And Mike, and so I went up to Mike and go, hey, you want to shoot some movies? And I shot some with him. I produced a lot of movies for David Christopher, you know, because he was shooting a couple movies a month for uh, Legend. And Pussy Man or yeah. something like that? Yeah, I just saw him the other day, too. Yeah, we saw him at Jim's party. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, I got, I, he didn't even know about it. Um, but no, I saw him, like, Tuesday also. Oh. But uh, he'd be an interesting person to interview. Really? Why? Because oh, he remembers everything going back to the 70s. I mean, he's got a really clear memory of everything. Hang on. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, when I talked to him, he remembers everybody and who did what when. He'd be a really good one. Yeah, he's a cool guy. Yeah. So, um, but then, you know, and then, like I said, I was uh, shooting movies. Girls kept asking me for work. I want to go back. I want to make sure I got the time frame correct. Yeah. 1985 was your first time on a set. Yeah. You're still day trading. You're still yes. trading stocks. Yes. So you just were on there for fun as a PA? Yeah. And I wanted... To be honest, I wanted to see, you know, porn being shot. But porn was beautiful and exciting, right? Yeah, it was, Mis well, I mean, back then, it's like people having sex. You don't see that. You wow. know? It was so, mysterious. And you yeah. snuck in in the early right, 70s. Right. But this is like behind the scenes. And you see it. Uh -huh. And I remember then uh, this, that one. Actually, the second one we did was in Palm Springs. Um, what was it? Uh, then I remember... Shooting in the Santa Monica Mountains, Crocodile Blonde D2. Oh, yeah? yeah. And I remember Roy Karch woke up that day, and he had a premonition that the, the shoot was going to get busted. So he called up Bill Margold and paid him to direct it for him. He never went to the set. Oh, shit. Yeah. Well, he got busted or not? No. Oh. But still, that was like, porn wasn't even legal here until I think 89 or 90. 80, 88, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Hal Freeman, yeah, the Freeman decision, yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I, and where else? Uh, oh, I remember in Palm Springs it was Punky Brewster or Funky Brewster, Funky, Funky Brewster. Brewster, yeah. Huh. So, so, those days you were pretty much just hanging on the sets, uh, PA, -ing. and then in the 90s is when you 87 you cashed out or 88 or no, I made a lot of money by 1980. But '87, like, was a particularly good year. But um, so hold on, you were so you were so successful with stock. What do you contribute that to? I'm a natural business person. No matter what, I can make. I remember in the late '70s there was the, the oil crisis, and people were lining up at gas stations to get gas and this and that. And what I did is I went down. You know, in those days it wasn't electronic. It was just you know pull the pump. It. And so people are waiting in line, some people for hours, days. I would take five gallon gas cans, go up to the front, fill them up, go in there, double the price, put it in a tank so you didn't have to, you know, I can always make money out of something. But how could you cut in front of the other people? No, I was just walk up by foot. Yeah. The ones that were using that pump, I just oh, I used the, the pump and the walked cars, down. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, when I was a little kid, I remember in elementary school, I used to make little bows and arrows out of Q-tips and, and stuff and sell them to kids. I, I always, like, wow. making money. So I, when I was 13, somebody gave me sock for my bar mitzvah in um, Belgium. Sock, sock. Sock, stock. Stock, stock. Yeah. Right, okay. And um, in AT&T, you know, which was the only phone company at the time. Then it was broken up by the Supreme Court into, you know, it was a monopoly broken up into the baby bills. And I had, then I had stock in 13 different, you know, and they went up and this and that, and that interested me. So that's what got me started doing that. Wow, so that's pretty trippy. So by 80... 1980. 19, no, but when did you f say, I'm done with trading? Late 80s, but by 1980, I never had to work again. Really? I mean, how, but, you know, there's different people have different ideas of not working. You know what I mean? I'm a money guy, math man. You know what I mean? I love math. And I like business. 
So what is enough? Some people, you know, for Bill Gates, you know, he's got a hundred billion, you know, so, you know, no, you know, I know, I'm just yeah. saying. And another person, you know, I mean, I've heard somebody say a million dollars is great. A million dollars is nothing. Right. It's not going to do shit, right? No, I mean, like, I mean, I casually spend a hundred thousand dollars a year on nothing. Uh -huh. So, I mean, I understand people think millionaire, millionaire, but that's nothing anymore. Not today, yeah. Yeah. So, um. So what's enough to retire? Probably then. I mean, I don't know how much I had. 20 million, 10 million? Oh, uh, Probably close to that. Awesome. I mean, I never, never would have had to work again. Uh -huh. And I, and that's like I said, one of the good things is the girls know that I'm not in this for the money, because, you know, we'll let the biggest girl, like I had Lana Rhodes, who was like the biggest girl, and she fucked up, and we dropped her. Or I don't know if you remember Venus. Yeah. Do you remember Venus? She was like, Venus. She was a penthouse girl. Yeah. But she was, like, really hot. Yeah, she was nice, nice, cool. And Brownish uh, hair. Yeah, I mean, I still talk to her. And uh, she was too pretty for porn in the beginning. She was penthouse and then girl, girl. But she turned out to be one of the dirtiest girls. Yeah, in she was did a gangbang for us, I think. Oh, I mean, she, yeah. <laughs> she, yeah. She even texted me about coming back recently. But um, I saw her when, like, a year ago. But I, mean, I still talk to her and there. Uh -huh. But the girls know that we don't care. They could be the best... I was in Barcelona with her, and she was running around talking, to, and I took her and some other girls to Europe to meet people to shoot, and we're at a party, and I go, if I turn around one more time and you're not there, because I'm here to introduce you to people, if I turn around one more time and you're not there, you're done. And I turned around, she wasn't there, she was done. But the girls know that we could drop them at any time. And we're also the only agency... Um, I think still that has no contracts with the girls. A lot of them sign a contract anywhere from like three to seven years. And if you have a dispute with a girl, you can let them go, but they can't go anywhere mm -hmm. because they're under contract to you. Right. So as long as you offer them a job once every four months, they're still under contract to you. Mm -hmm. So the girls know that we're not doing it for the money and that they got to kind of be in line, you know. What do you do it for? I have no idea. That's, <laughs> somebody just did a documentary. They think I have like a daddy complex. And one of the girls we have, uh, Lorelai Lee, said it's like a big dysfunctional family. That could be it. I don't know. But I mean, somebody, these girls do need somebody to kind of take care of them. You know, make, you know, make sure they don't blow their money, try to keep them away from the loser boyfriends, which is tough. Um, and make sure, you know, they're not fucked up and keep their ego in check because some of our girls are pretty famous uh -huh. and that can mess with your your mind, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. The vanity will destroy you. So... Uh, <laughs> How many times have you seen that? I don't want to hear, guys, I never want to hear, say, do you know who I am? <laughs> <sighs> no. Hey, sometimes, you know, the hype will get you. No, it can't. And, it, and it's not just porn, it's just in general, like... It plays to your ego, and you have guys on set, whether it's true, you know, oh, you're the greatest, you know, because they, A, you're hot, but B, they want to get through the day. So they're telling you, you're the greatest, I love you, da, 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 uh -huh. and that goes to the girls' heads. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I'm, <laughs> I've seen a lot of, yeah. I've seen a lot of shit. So let's go back to that, um, you know, so 1988, you said you're done, and this is, you're going to be on the set, or is that 1990, or? Um, I started, like, I mean, like, 85, I helped uh, Roy Karch in the late 80s. Uh -huh. I don't know, to when. Uh -huh. Then, like I said, around 95, 95, he came to me. He was working at Gourmet Studio as a salesman, uh -huh. and he directed for them, too, in-house. And he said, oh, back then, you know, you could shoot a feature, and sell it to, like, VCA, Sin City, you know, as long as it was good, broadcast quality, whatever. So, um, you know, I knew Roy from my cousin, so we I put up the money. How much would you put up at the time? The, back then, I remember the first movie I ever shot, uh, we ended up selling to VCA. Uh, it cost $6,700, maybe $68, $67 something. And that was with um, Gina Fine, Anna Mall. Uh, we rented a um, a mansion up in Bel Air. The guy had a discotheque in the in the place. 
Um, so, uh, and, and that's all it costs then. I mean, just to shoot it, not editing, not anything else. Just, I still have the, the budgets. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, and a briefcase at home. The first one cost me 6700 bucks. The next one cost me 7300 bucks. The next one, but the first one, like, Sin City, uh, Mickey Blank, I don't know if you remember him, at Sin City, he was in charge, and he's like, don't even shop this around, just bring it to me, and I'll buy it, and then, really? and then, well, what's the, what did you, how much you sell it for? Well, what happened was Roy took it over there, and he's like, well, we'll buy it, but we have a tax problem right now, we could pay you later, and, uh, so, I so think, Sin City? Oh. Yeah, he was full of crap. Well, let me, let me explain to you about Sin City. Oh, no, yeah. No, you already know, I used to wait, right, because you know who owns Sin City? Yeah. David Stern. Yeah. And I used to wait six months, a year, and they'd say, oh, uh, well, 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 no, we don't have it. Uh, oh, well. And just so to it, pay you? Just to pay me for my movies. Yeah. Not for uh, as an actor, uh, but to pay me for my no, movies that I sold to them. So you know what they have to do? You would get, I'm still, they still owe me $10,000. I, I mean, when he told that to Roy Karch, Roy called me, I go, take the movie and leave. And we went right over to VCA, and and uh, Russ Hampshire bought it. Tony, love it, worked mm -hmm. there. And they bought it for, I pay, it cost $6,700, they paid us ten grand for the first one. So for a day's work, we made $3,300. bucks. they edited it? Yeah, yeah. They, and then... <laughs> Back then, it was seven scenes, but Roy, Whoa, seven Roy scenes. only shot five. He should have known. They had to shoot two more and add it. Oh, shit. But they bought it from us for ten, added two more scenes, and put it out. So that cost money right there. Yeah, but that was there. The, you know. But I made like three grand on the first one. Uh, I think like five grand we made on the second one. The third. But then after that, when, because uh, everybody knew Roy kind of didn't have much money, so they lowballed him. Then when I started doing it myself, uh, I got more money for the movies because people knew I didn't need the money, so they paid me like a, a decent amount. And I mean, I've made up to, you know, the movie would take one to two days to shoot and I'd make like five to 10 grand. Mm -hmm. and, but you gotta produce it so it takes time to organize it, but big yeah, deal. Yeah, but I mean, it was like, okay. Yeah. And then I did that, and like I said, I helped David Christopher out a bunch of times. And uh, I shot for Sin City. I shot for. Uh, oh, so you started you shooting for Sin City? They started paying you. Well, the first one was VCA. Right, but Sin City was the one you went to first, and you left. Yeah, because yeah, because I knew he was. He said, "Don't worry, my word is gold." And, uh, and he started calling me Bubby. And when the Jews, he's Jewish, and he tries playing on that you're Jewish, uh -huh. and I'm like, no. Nah. <laughs> so. And we went right at right, Russ Hampshire. Next day, they gave us a check. Boom, we're out of there. Yeah, he was pretty direct. Pretty. He was. That was it. Pretty yeah. Hard. Yeah. He his word was like really good. Yeah, I liked Russ. Yeah. He just passed on in January. Yeah, yeah. I went to the. Yeah, I went to the funeral. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, cool. Did you know? Just to change the subject, just a midget, smidget. Jim Powers. You know Jim Powers. Yeah. He was a stockbroker too. Yeah, I know. Before, yeah. Right, trippy, right? And he married. Uh, Gail Force, right. born, which she's still married to. Uh-huh, she's cool. She's yeah, like, so you know Gail Force was kind of a star in the 80s. It's kind of cool, right? She was like a B-level. She yeah. went on the top, and she, was, she always had that haircut, everybody, you know. Yeah. Yeah, no, I remember. Yeah. And also the first porn party I went to, I don't know if he knows this, was um, some photographer had it on Edgemont in West L.A., and she was there dressed as... She showed up with a bunch of people in the van, dressed as a little Bo Peep, and everybody was like, hey, who wants to go out and bang her in the van before oh, her husband shows no. up? Oh, no. Yeah. So what? I, I remember that, yeah. No way. Yeah. So he was married to her? He, she wasn't, he wasn't there yet, but everybody wanted to know, if you want to go out and bang her in the van before her husband got there? Yeah. Hey, the good old days. Really? Yeah. He was married to her, though? Yeah. But he wasn't there yet. Whoa. Huh. That's a strip. Really? Okay, he banged Whoa. a lot of people when she wasn't around, too. He yeah. did? <laughs> She's caught him. She caught him? One year, <laughs> oh, she geez. came to AVN. And he was making out with some chick at the bar. She just showed up and, like, made him come home. And then every night, he would have to come home and fly to AVN the next morning. Yeah. 
Wow, he had to fly home? Yeah, okay. and then back to the AVN the next morning for the convention and then back because she wouldn't trust him. Oh shit, so he liked to play around. Yeah, yeah I mean, you know. Well, I mean, I didn't know, but you know, I asked him. He said, no. But I mean, Jim's a wonderful guy and I like him a lot. So. Yeah, and no, I saw him Tuesday too, yeah. He's cool, right? I mean, yeah. But that's an interesting story, that's pretty wild. But I mean, he's a really smart guy. Yeah. Yeah. And, he's, and he used to make really wacky, crazy stuff, but good-natured. Unlike Rob Black or whatever, who made crazy stuff that was just not good-natured. Right, right. But uh, Jim, Jim, uh, I, well, I call him by his real name, but Jim Powers, yeah, he come up with all kinds of, like, just crazy stuff. I always liked that guy. Always, yeah. He has such a uh, vibrant personality. Right, and he... He goes with whatever, you know, like now, I think he's shooting a lot of tranny stuff now or whatever, <laughs> but he don't care. He's like, ah. He's just got to win. He's in it to win it. Yeah, that's it. Make money, save his money. I mean, he's been, he's got money put away. Yeah, he's cool. I like him. I hope, I wish him the best. And his marriage, because I like him both. Yeah, it was cool. But I haven't seen her for quite a while. Yeah. I think I worked with her in 1990, you know? Wow. Something like that. But, um, yeah, I worked with her two or three times, but... So you, um, you're producing these movies and you're making three to five to six, seven grand a movie, popping them out? Yeah. Oh, that's strange. I had to see you on a set maybe because were you going on the set all the time? I would, but like I said, you probably see me at either parties or at, yeah. at the gourmet studio. I used to hang out there with Stallone and his dad and them a lot. I, you don't remember the studio, right? No, no I, don't, I don't think I went. I have very good memory, right? Yeah. So I only remember a studio, another studio I was next to Track Tech back in the early 90s. There was a springboard over there in San Fernando. Right? Gourmet and Studios was, the company was the first company to release videotape. I mean, shoot movies and put them out on oh, videotape. Oh, I heard of Gourmet yeah. for sure. Yeah. Sure, I did movies for them, right? Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. Probably, yeah, I mean, I did a lot of work. And before Rob Sloan was in, in California, they had Ronnie and, and uh, I forget Joe's partner, but they used to shoot before, mm -hmm. yeah. Huh. Yeah, so, yeah, okay. So, I mean, you're, so you're shooting all these movies, making them money, and then a, a girl says to you, hey. Girls kept asking me to help them get work, and I did, and I did. Then one year, I was at AVN, and a French guy who I used to sell rights to brought this really beautiful girl, Lisa Crawford. I mean, like, runway model. I, I can't, that was her stage name, yeah, Lisa Crawford? French, yeah, French, oh. yeah. And, and uh, he said, can you help her get work? And I'm like, yeah. And I knew everybody. And the thing is, she didn't drive, she didn't speak English. So I drove her around, and she made like $56,000 in two months. Went back to France, sent her friends... They came, I helped them, and I had a house at that time right off of um, Reseda and Van Owen. So they were, like, staying there, and it was the first, like, kind of model house, and also we were the first people driving the girls around, not because we were geniuses, but because they didn't drive or didn't want to drive in America. But so she sent her friends, and they sent their friends, and they sent their friends, and that's how it all started. And that was... Like, the very... 99, you're saying? Or? I started shooting stuff 95. So I'd say 97, 98. The girls started coming probably 98, 99. That I, like, was, like, formally um, representing them. Then I started a company with a, a guy named Mike Sullivan. It was called Top Models. That was the original one. Mike, yeah, right, Sullivan, right? Yeah. So he went on he, his own, right? Yeah, he's got porn pros. Right. So I started with him. He was working as a waiter at Gladstone's for Fish in Malibu. Right. And then he wanted to be in porn, and I knew the guy, so I helped him get into I named him Jerk Douglas. And he did some shoots, you know, as talent. This is obviously Wait, post Viagra. I so don't know. 2001, 2002? No, it was probably just before that. Like around 2000. Well, he started working with me. No, it's going to be before that because he started working with me around then, and he was doing talent before that. Really? Yeah. So Viagra came in 2000. But then but it, what happened was uh, he was doing pretty good, and uh, then somebody wanted to book him with Bridget the Midget. 
yeah. And I said, don't do it. And he's like, oh. I go, you wouldn't see Mark Davis doing that. You wouldn't see, like, up and coming, you know. And then he did it and it fucked with his head. And really? he's like, um, he goes, I'm out, kid. I'm out. I can't do this anymore. And I'm like, I thought he was joking. And he goes, no, you know, she's got a cute little face and nice little personality, but I started fucking her little arms and legs are going everywhere. It just freaked me out. So then um, he was working with me, but then I split off and started at Spiegler Girls. And uh, we had like 12 or 15 girls at the time. And I said, okay, I'm just going to start my own company and you guys are free to go wherever you want. But all of them came with me. So then he started working with Derek at LA Direct. And he had all the contacts because from working with me, all the companies, the emails, the phone numbers. So he helped Derek start LA Direct. No kidding. Yeah. So that's like, it's not really espionage because you okay no, it? Yeah, that was, yeah. He could do, you know. Yeah. And then, then he went on to start this company, Porn Pros, which... Very successful? Yeah, they were pretty good. They, uh... I think he lives in Vegas. That they shoot a lot in Vegas and some here. So was direct models a serious competition for you? At some at at some point, because um, you know Derek wanted to work with me in the beginning, but I said no, and um, so he in the the early two thousands because you know there was a lot of people shooting everything at that time. And so if you had a bunch of girls, you could, I mean, you could book probably ugly girls too, you know, but I remember back then, like when uh, Red Light was big and they had all these directors there too, Manuel and, and Brandon Iron and Mark Wood and, and Mr. Pete and all the, and you just go in there and you could book like 20 shoots just stopping by with a girl there. Was that what Dion was there? Yeah. Dion, yeah. Dion's great, right? D I still, well, no, I haven't talked to him probably about a year since he sold his company. But um, even even till the end when he had, uh, what was the name of the company? Combat Zone? Philly yeah, Films? Yeah, yeah. The, the, uh, like, I would send out an email, we got this girl, and he always write back, can't afford her. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's let it be known right now. Mark, girls are high priced. <laughs> yeah. But they, I mean, and, and they didn't want to pay a lot. So, but I still like, you know, communicate with them here and there. And, um, but, and Dion, yeah, Dion was great. For, that's another guy where his word was like yeah. always good. I said, he's a very good friend of mine. Yeah. No, was, does he still live around here somewhere? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That guy's word was always good. Yeah. So, and he gave chances to like, uh, you know, Jake Malone. When, you know, because Jake Malone was in prison for a while, and then when he got, you know, he gave him a chance and, and other people. So. I think that he helped, he gave opportunity to so many of the actors, too, you know what I mean? To yeah. get their film started, and I think he even loaned them money to get their production going. I was going to get it, to become, yeah, directors, yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah. 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 I started my company. And that's his real name. Yeah. So I, I remember uh, Jake Malone said he saw like his name in magazines when he was in prison, and then he got out and he just looked him up, you know, and just found him. Really? So, yeah. And he knew him before, but he didn't know where to find him. And because he was using his real name, he found him. They knew, he knew him from prison or something? He knew, he knew him before. Jake Malone was like way back when a druggie, uh -huh. and he tried carjacking a, a taxi <laughs> at knife point and really? ended up going to jail for a while, yeah. Oh, shit. But... Um, but he knew Dion by his real name, so when he got out, he looked him up, and Dion gave him a job. Yeah. Oh, well, that's cool. I mean, I've seen Dion give a lot of people a lot of chances. Yeah, He's yeah. helped a lot of people. But he, st he started Red Light District, which yeah. is a very popular company, and I could see that because there are so many directors over there. That must have been like a little gold mine, right? Like I said, where I could go in there, and all these people were, you know, they'd be in their office in the morning. You could come in, bring in all these girls, they book them for a bunch of shit. But back to Derek back then, if you had a, what he did is he got a lot of girls. We don't, you know, I used to try to keep it at 25. Now I'm trying to keep it at 30, and even that's tough. Really? But uh, yeah, because we turned down about 200 girls a year. And, um, wow. uh -huh. well, some of them are not good looking, some of them, uh, whatever. How do they come? I mean, they I just call you? A lot of emails. References? A lot of emails. Um, calls, text messages, but uh, mainly emails now. 
But, um, you know, I can, I'm basically the company and I do all the booking and the this and that. So you can't do a good job for a ton of girls and I don't need the money. So, you know, like Derek in the beginning, he had a lot of girls, which gave him a lot of leverage. Now there's not that many and a lot of them, you know, don't work a lot, so he doesn't have that much leverage. Plus, I don't think he's really that interested in the in the industry anymore. You know, he's mm -hmm. in Vegas. He's doing other stuff. Mm -hmm. So the the original original OG, of course, was Jim South. Yes, and you're friends with Jim. Yeah, I mean, I, I remember the first time um, when before I started shooting with Roy, and Roy took me. And yeah, this is Jim South. Da, da, da. You pay him, and back then, I think the. The fee was sixty dollars. I don't know about guys. It was fifty five to sixty five. Okay. Well, I, I mean, I might have started when it was forty five, but you know. But I didn't know if guys were more or less than girls. That was the same, straight across. Yeah. But also, he never charged them. I don't think a fee. No. Nope. And uh, so that's kind of new, and uh, and I don't think he ever had a contract with anybody. A few here and there, <laughs> when things changed. Huh. Right, when uh, more agents came around. Yeah, because now they could just try and steal the girls yeah. if they're not under contract. You groom them, then it's steal them, right? Yeah. I mean, we don't have that problem, but we have a problem is that I want to take on other girls, but none of them want to leave. <laughs> so, <laughs> really? I, yeah, I have like a waiting list to get on the site. No kidding. Oh, yeah. That's great, man. And what do you contribute that to? Because, I mean, we're well known, and everybody knows we're... We take care of the girls, you know. We're we're nice to them. Um, that they can leave anytime they want. They're not going to be stuck in a contract. Uh, we never steal anybody's money. Um, we get them a lot of work and with better companies. And I think the reason we get them a lot of work and with better companies is because I'm really strict about stuff. So. Nowadays, a lot of shoots are in Vegas or in Arizona or whatever. So they Arizona too. Sorry, yeah, Arizona. Wow. Yeah. So um, they want girls that are going to show up, that are going to get on the plane and get there. So we have a very, like I said, we've only had three girls ever miss a shoot. So, uh, or like Wicked, if they're doing a feature, they'll book our girls and they'll book them early in the day, so they know they're going to be there on time. You know, not slow down the rest of the day. And um, so, you know, being strict with the girls and making them into professionals helps them, you know, with their career. Yeah, how hard is that job? Depends on the girls. Some of them are pretty professional when we get them. Also, in the old days, a lot of girls I got started at Kink. And a lot of those... Started at Kink? Started at Kink.com. Really? Yeah, Bobby Star, Aiden Star. Uh, Adriana, Nicole, and those girls are already, they're not druggies, they're hardcore performers, um, they, you know, they'll show up on time, they, they're used to being told what to do, and doing it, so, you know, and, and they do hardcore stuff, I mean, I have a girl right now, um, I don't know if you know who Casey Calvert is, No. and, oh, show me her picture, she gra uh, graduated, she graduated from Florida, uh, University of Florida with a degree in film. But no, the picture I want to show, she wrote me, she'd never done porn. And she wrote me, she wanted to get into porn. When she first came here, she gave me her phone to look through for pictures, you know, of her. And this is like from before, I don't know if you want to show Whoa. it. Whoa. Before she did. Can I show these pictures? yeah. yeah. Holy moly. I mean, this is her playing around? Yeah. Before her, porn. What the hell? And I told her, I go, you can't do that. She's anymore. from Kink? She she always, she always wanted to always work at Kink. Wow. That was her goal. Now she works from all the time. What? what how She's that happened? She's in the bondage. You know, that's her lifestyle. And when she, she says, I heal in two weeks, don't worry. I go, if you're going to do porn here, you can't do that. You can work for Kink, but you can't get marked up because you have to work the next day and the next day and the next day. So. I mean, so is she pretty? Yeah. Are you kidding? She, uh. I mean, what is the world coming to? These pretty girls want to get demolished. To, like, I realized early on, I, I would never let anybody hit me, but that's, um, uh, him. 
Oh, I can't. Yeah. Oh, you can't show. Okay. Let's see here. Oh, I'll just see it. You can look her up. Oh, she has a beautiful face. There we yeah. go. And look at body. that face. Wow. Yeah. What a pretty girl. Really? You know why? She probably likes it because she's so pretty and everybody's been kissing her ass. She needs a little bit of change. You know, like Skin Diamond? Yeah. Okay, when Skin came to me, she was a submissive and she had some guy burn her. I mean, like, burn her. Well, she had to get a tattoo over it. Really? So, yeah. Intel really? Intellectually, I understand. Some people are submissive, some are not. I, you know, I would never let somebody hit me, but that's what they're into. And she liked it, getting burnt? Yeah. Wow. And one, after she was with me for two years, she's like, oh, for my birthday, can I take two weeks off to go to Kink so they can mark me up? I'm like... Okay. No way, man. Yeah. I need you to say that one more time so people understand. One of the prettiest girls I've seen in a long time, that yeah. face is a 10. Yeah. Likes to get beat up. Yeah. That's that's their lifestyle. Wow. That was nothing to do with porn. That was before porn. Kind of like that guy on Billions. You see, remember, you watch Billions when he gets, he gets spanked all the time? Oh, no. But they did mention us on the show. Yeah? Speaker, yeah. Did they? Yeah. Really? Yeah, I have it. I have it on tape. Yeah. Oh, that was cool. But uh, at least Ann was on there. Yeah, well, they wanted to hire some of our girls, but they had to be in New York. And uh, yeah, it's too much money, too much time. They, yeah. But uh, but uh, yeah, no. Some people, you know, that's their shtick. Yeah, that's a trip. You know what I mean? But Karina Collins loves her ass beat. She was sexy too. Yeah. She had, I don't know. She still has that dungeon. That, I, she had a dungeon. Yeah, in North Hall. People used to shoot there all the time. I, yeah, I'm not in that. I never was interested in that. You know. I only know it because we shot there, right? And she was a lawyer too. Really? Yeah, Karina Collins. She graduated. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Really? And actually, one of our girls who's started at Kink, I don't know if you know who Lorelai Lee is. No. Um, uh, let me, let me, oh my God! What a face! Let me show her face. It's okay. Yeah. Look at that face. So she's become an attorney? Yep. Oh my Graduates god. Graduates this year. What type of attorney? That's a face. She's gonna be actually a sex worker, like for sex rights. Oh, okay. um, oh really? So yeah. she's like an avenging angel attorney? She testified for John Stagliano when he was on trial. Oh. And that kind of her mom her mom worked her her way, her mother worked her way through law school while she was on welfare. And she worked for King for like 10 years. She worked for us for several years. And then when she went to the trial for Sagliano, it got in her mind to become a lawyer. And then she got into Cornell and she's graduating, you know, with, with honors. Wow, man. That face. Is that face that pretty in real life? Yeah. Yeah. Who's pretty? The girl you showed me or this Laura Lee girl? You can't be no, biased no on camera? Nah, nah. <laughs> okay. They both, are they equal, you think? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. They look great, yeah. man. Those are... I like dark hair, but that blonde's pretty, yeah. Yeah, I'm, personally, I'm not big into blondes either. Yeah, we have a lot of them. Yeah, yeah. She had a nice breast, everything. She's great. Wow. Oh, yeah. No, she was... I mean, do you know who Annette Schwartz? I think I heard of her name. Annette Schwartz was like the hardest court chick ever in porn. And... Uh, uh, of she, this last generation or period? I'd say in the last 20 years. 20 years, okay. Like, I, I remember when Red Light was open and I brought her in there. Manuel Farrar was working there. And it was the only time I saw him fanboy over. Oh my God, I have all your movies. All She's a six foot tall German girl. She injured a lot of Dirty Harry. She tore his toenail off during the scene. Really? Yeah. Wow. But um, she worked with this girl for Joey Silvera. And uh, they were both staying at my house. This one was brand new and they barely talked. And when they worked for Joey Silvera, she was choking this girl. And uh, she was choking her. She had her. Uh, hand over her mouth and she wanted to pinch off her nose and didn't have any more hands so she bit her and like cut her and this one fell in love with her right there that was it whoa yeah it really was, so she's really not interested in normal she, she, missionary no yeah like i said she she worked first um first as talent for kink and then as a director for kink and now yeah she's in law school wow i mean things are really evolving huh but this is what we're looking forward to in the next uh, next world generation. Yeah, we're going to be president. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you couldn't do worse. No, no. No, I mean, she was gorgeous. So, yeah. did any of Jim's girls ever come to you looking for jobs? I don't think so. The business was totally different then. And back then, like you know, a director would call up Jim. He'd go out. You could come by and see the girl on the couch, 
or he would just give the director the phone number and they would call the girl directly. But, um, you know, I, I don't really know because that was like a long time ago. But uh, with us now, you know, the, the companies call us and we do all the booking. But I don't know if we ever got any girls that were represented by him. We, we never recruit girls. So I never go out, hey, do you want to, you know, so... Maybe some of them might have come to us, but I don't, I don't really recall. You put ads out? Or? No, no, never. No? So never, it's you've never mouth. never put ads out ever? Never. That's incredible. Sir. And if I go on set and there's girls there, we don't, you know, I don't talk to them. I'm like, hi, whatever, that's it. But we don't recruit. We don't, you know. So you're like one of a kind. So far, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, really. I mean. Yeah. You know, because of all those agents, let's talk about the agents, right? You know, we talked about Jim, of course, is a honorary, you know, um, pioneer. He's definitely. You know, you know and he's my, I love him. And so he's on top of the world. He he doesn't really uh, evolve around these, the other world, I think. And, you know, because he's the one who started it. But yeah. let's talk about the other agents, right? Who we talked about, Derek. You have Chris of Fox. You had um, Joel, right? A gold, gold star? Gold star, yeah. gold star. You know, He was a performer that couldn't get his thing hard until Viagra came. But you don't know because you weren't really around back no, then. No, I, I yeah. hired him. In the early 90s, he yeah. couldn't perform. But um, I hired him, and uh, and also I was in a movie with him for um, Bob Chin. No. Where I, really? Yeah. Wow, okay. I was playing. He killed me. He shot me in a movie. Yeah, he's a nice enough guy. But, yeah. But uh, he started, he got into drugs and I was into that. Oh, is that what happened to him? Oh, yeah, he's long gone. Yeah, I mean, I I know, I just, you know, no. But I mean, like now you have ATM LA. ATM. And he, he's actually a nice guy. Is he? OC modeling? Yeah, they're okay. Okay. And like Motley models, they're doing pretty good. Yeah. They get a lot of young, you know, new girls. Matrix, they got a lot of young new girls too. Yeah. They, they, they're okay. Then there was the outliers, AJ and um, Thomas Hope and Ron Ellis. Yeah, you never hear. They're like all long gone. Well, Ron Ellis passed away. Yeah, but I mean, they're all... Yeah. I have on my computer, like on the bookmarks, you know, all the agents. And then I have mm -hmm. another little fold in there of your know, defunct agencies. And there's like 70 of them in there. Everybody thought they could be an agent. Uh -huh. And also, like, uh, like the... Me, ATMLA, Derek, a lot. We're like licensed, like bonded, le yeah, legal talent agents. There's a lot of like so called agents, and, and most of them go by the wayside too, but they're not legal. Yeah, a lot of gorilla style pimping. Yeah. They might call it. <laughs> or, or, yeah, boyfriend, suitcase pimps. Uh -huh. So, uh huh. So, pretty much people who want to get with you have to wait in line these days unless they're so pretty then you let them in even then i have a girl here's the next one hold on don't worry these are off instagram so they're uh you can show them you can go with that so this girl wants to be yeah, in your agency she's been waiting a couple of months i mean she looks pretty oh yeah her breasts are covered, by the way, in case anybody... Yeah, Instagram, yeah. You know? And so, she was... Huh, okay. This one from Australia. Oh, and my And she's yeah. going to be leaving, so... The other pictures are not safe for work on there. Uh, huh. But, so when she leaves, well, then there'll be a spot for the other girl. So, she looks great. Yeah, but she... Uh, oh, here. Oh, she's really hot. I can show her a picture? Yeah, I mean, she's... She's trying to get on the Spiegler girls. She is. She is. And then when she goes back to Australia at the end of the month, the other girls get to take her spot. Yeah, but we're going to try and get that one a visa. Look at that face. She looks great. Great body, great yeah, butt. Yeah, she, and she's a really good performer. Yeah. She, she loves it. Yeah, and if you notice, not to brag, but to brag. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like at AVN, I think eight of the last ten performers of the year were our girls. And... Eight? Yeah. And I think wow. seven of the last eight. Like Riley Reed, Bobby Starr, um, Asa Akira, um, uh, Bonnie Rotten, uh, Annika Albright, um, 
twice in a row, uh, Angela White. Um, Riley Reed's your girl, too? Yeah. Wow, you have all those girls. She, I still, and not only that, but I even have the original emails that they wrote me. Really? Yeah, because she was with, uh, who was she with? Go, no, Type 9. Riley was around, she was around for about a year before, and she was popular, but not super, you know. And now she's like number one in the world. Yeah. Is she no, number one, really? Yeah. Wow. She's number one, and Angela's number two. Who? Angela White. So those two are the top porn stars in the world right now? Yeah. You, you know who Angela White is, huh? No. Listen, <laughs> Rocco flew here for one day just to shoot one scene with her. Really? For, for John Stagliano, not for himself. For Stagliano? Yeah. You, is your girl? Yeah. Let's see the... She's won performing the year the last two years in a row. Wow, really? Yeah, you know. That's incredible. You I didn't think, know you had all these big stars. That's amazing. Yeah, look at the success you've created. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. So Riley Reed's been around a few years, huh? Yeah, she's been with me six or seven. She's been with me about four or five. Angela. I think it, Riley's part Puerto Rican or something, right? That's what I heard. Uh, I don't know. I'm Puerto Rican, so... That's what I heard, you know. So so this is the most popular She's second. like number two after Riley. Number two in the world? Why? She's, she's okay, if you meet her, she's uh -huh. super smart. Uh -huh. She's got a master's degree. She's got the Australian accent. She's got big natural tits. She's a great, great performer. And Angela White. Angela White, yeah. Angela White, this is number two in the world. That's a big deal, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. She's, uh... She looks nice. And not only that, well, like, like, at AVN, in the last two years, she won, I think, 19 AVN Awards. What the so, Yeah, she's also fuck? a director and editor. 19 this, Awards? Yeah. Really? Yeah. The, everybody loves her. Including Performer of the Year the last two years in a row, yeah. Is, is she an animal in a scene, or...? Ask Rocco. Yeah, all right. I don't know if you ever talked to him, but, yeah. Yeah, not... Or, you, you know, um... I mean, I know Rocco well, you know. Yeah, you can. Uh, he wants her to fly out there and shoot for him now, but uh, uh, um, Rocco he, shot. I thought he retired as a performer. No, <laughs> okay. But you know who Marcus Dupree? Uh, not He's really. like the, one of the top male performers now. Is he? Yeah, and if you ask him about it, I mean, she she looks innocent, kind of like uh -huh. you know. Classy and whatever, but she did double anal and gang bangs and blow, yeah, and everything. Oh, that's She's really good. Oh. And she has her own production company, and her stuff outsells everybody's. And who's she with? Her production company? For it's her own, Angel White Productions. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh. Like when she puts out stuff now, she's selling six, seven, eight thousand copies at DVDs now. What? Yeah. But who distributes it? Um, Girlfriend Films. Oh, so it's lesbian stuff or? No, no. Oh, so they distribute Boy Girl too? Yeah. Hers. Six to eight thousand DVDs? Come on. At this point in time? You know Moose, the guy that owns uh I never met him. You can call Girl. him up and ask him. That's unbelievable. Really? If you look, she's always like she puts something out, it's usually number one or number two on on uh, Adult DVD Empire for quite a while. Wow. That is good news to hear. So she's a an And like if you look at Instagram, wait, watch this. She's got Legitimate, okay, her main Instagram right now has 4.4 million, and she has a backup one with like 2 point something million, yeah, like well, legitimate followers. What is it? What's it called? Instagram. No, no, what's their... Um, Angela White. Angela White, wow. And she owns, you know, you, you know Black China. Yeah, yeah, rap type yeah, of... That is Angela White's her real name. That's Angela White's real name, too. That, oh, know, really? Yeah. We have a lot of girls that perform under their real names. That is, it's a whole different world, right? Yeah, Valentina Nappi, Angela White, Dana DiArma, you know, the, all their real names, yeah. And these are all your girls. So what does a girl like that charge per scene? <laughs> I don't want to say. But <laughs> really? Lot, yeah. You can't say that? I can't say. Because she's got high rates? Oh, yeah. I mean, the highest rates we have right now is uh, a Bella Danger, you know her? No. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> what is I'll that? I'll show it to you, but you can't say it. Really? Yeah. Oh. But um, what's the standard rate per day then? On for, well, it's not by the day anymore. Oh, by, <laughs> by the, the scene, scene, of course. I right? mean, our girls start off at a thousand for boy girl and go up, way up from there. 
But um, you try like that's don't show the camera. Right now. What? Oh, that's hers. Well, that's amazing. This is. That, oh, that, this is the other girl you're saying. Here, no, that's this girl here. She's uh, like one. one as for one. For one BG. Yeah. That's something. Or, or look at that's her anal right. Wow, that's crazy. That is for interracial or for it doesn't. No, just uh, we don't charge. Some agents charge more for. We don't charge more for interracial. I never thought that. No, was, to, uh, to me, a, a boy girl is a boy girl is a boy. I mean, you might charge for your first one, but you charge more for first anal or first whatever. Yeah. But not for scenes. Things have changed a lot with the interracial idea. I remember uh, back when Shawn Michaels and them were first doing it, and the thing is with. As, as a business person, I tell the girls, you know, like black.com or black, uh, blacks on black. If you do interracial nowadays, a lot of people will hate you and they're racist and this and that, but you will still find a lot more followers, more fans if you do IR than if you don't. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I mean, anal is pretty popular too. Anal. I remember when. Anal. I, yeah. Yeah. I remember when I was first around this and. Not too much of it. Yeah. And, and then when I first was shooting movies, like in the nineties, I remember a friend of mine from high school. I was sending him a copy of everything. And after like a couple of years, he goes, "What's with all this anal?" And that's when I realized, yeah, it's kind of shifted uh -huh. to. And that was, you know, Missy. You remember Missy? You don't remember it? She, I mean, I'm not, uh, some Missy's, of course. Which just is, Missy, yeah. She blonde hair, yeah, kind of thick uh, thighs. Yeah, and she yeah. You know, cute little, and she like made anal like really popular back then. It was Mickey G her? Yeah, her husband. Okay. And yeah, uh, she died from a drug overdose. Really? Yeah. yeah hanging out with him. No kidding. Huh? Yeah, and you know she was a nurse before this. Yeah, no, I did one of I might have did her first scene. She came on to Jay Shanahan's set. You know, and hey. she was trying to see the waters and look on the set and see guys like me or somebody who was going to work with her. And, uh, and she was really quiet and this and that. And then when she yeah. did the scene, she just go crazy. Yeah, she's really repressed. Sex yeah. was sexually repressed, huh? Hey, well, Riley Reed, her father was a, a, a anti-pornography, like, speaker. Yeah. Wow, really? Yeah. And wh how, wow. So that must be kind of a... Uh, yeah, he didn't like it when she started, but... To, yeah, she don't care. She don't care. Well, so back to those rates, because rates, everyone wants to know about rates. You know, he showed me a rate. I can't disclose it. But the I average mean, rate. Yeah, the median the me, for our girl, for a boy girl, they start off at a thousand bucks and go up from there. So uh, let's, let's say a thousand bucks for a boy girl, the, your normal girl. Yeah. Right. And then, you know, what's a boy girl anal? Uh. Depends on the girls, but they were usually like thirteen hundred, fifteen hundred bucks and up. And then um, a boy, boy, girl, anal. Yeah, like two, three hundred dollars for the extra guy. Two, not, three. not DP. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, what's a DP go for? It depends on you know the girl. Average. Uh, I'd say fifteen hundred bucks and up. Okay, so the rates aren't so far away from what they no, used but, to be. You know, a, a thing you might find interesting is because of the internet. In the old days, people would shoot here or shoot there. But because of the internet and they have to schedule stuff, like Riley Reed right now is booked until June 2020. No way. Yeah, I mean, I give her days off, and she has her own website thing, too. 2020? Yeah. I have another girl uh, who's really famous right now, Alina Lopez. And right now, her first booking is open is like the end of February. Well, that is oh, wait. You unreal. Love this one. Hang on. Let's... I can't even believe it. So, whose rates are more? I know Riley or Angela. Right? The, no, the Angela, white girl is the white uh, Riley, uh, Abella Danger is the highest, then, then Riley, then Angela. Okay. But, um, where is this one's great. Wait, we're, uh, That's... see this girl? Wow, she's pretty. Yeah. She's so like it. a movie star. So, right now, the, the porn stars. That girl's were... booked till February. But wait, I'll give you... Can I show her? Yeah, yeah. What's your name? Alina Lopez. She's Spanish? I mean, that's a Spanish yeah. name? Yeah, but she's Mormon. Mormon? Oh, that makes her extra horny. She lives in Utah. Oh, yeah. She's repressed. She comes out here for two weeks at a time. 
Wait, watch it. This is... Uh, she's like... Oh, she's a... And she had never done anything or? when she wrote me. <laughs> and another really popular girl right now. She looks very pretty. Is she very pretty? Oh, yeah. She's penthouse pet. To say. A lot of our girls are pets. Um, so right now, would you say you have the prettiest girls, bar none? Well, I'm going to say that, but of course, this girl, look, at this girl wrote me out of the blue. I can't, uh, you can't see. Well, you can see. Yeah, oh, my God. Natural. I can't show her, though, no. Uh, well, you can. No. You can. I don't know if you're allowed to. Th those are natural? Yeah. Unbelievable. But she's like... Uh, she had done a couple of scenes for you know, for uh, Reality Kings or something. And first shoot I got her was a penthouse centerfold. And now she's actually pet of the year. Really? The natural tits. Unbelievable. Those yeah. are, what are those? Can I show the, this, yeah. uh, uh, this penthouse? And this is the same girl you showed me, right? Yeah. These, her, you got to check her out. What's her name? That one's Gianna Dior. Gianna Dior. The breasts look like about a 40... Triple E or I something. have to look it up. Hang on. Unbelievable. But yeah. the thing is, this girl, <laughs> she has what she calls a vagina of steel. Like, I don't even want to book her as much as she works. But um, and that's she, she's done 28 scenes in a month. Really? Yeah. So that's old school. Right? But, but um, So what is a gangbang? For a girl like that, what's a gangbang? Well, she's not going to do a gangbang yet, but it'd be several thousand dollars. Three thousand? Well, no, more than that. Four thousand? Yeah, with no anal. Oh, yeah. Anal five thousand? No, it'd probably be more like five grand with no anal. Oh, five grand with no anal. Yeah. What about anal? She doesn't do anal yet. Oh, but she, she might. do it. Yeah? yeah? So six or seven grand? I don't know, because I've had way more offer for way more money than that just for her first anal. Really? Yeah. Wow, that's incredible, right? I mean, do you look back and go, wow, these prices are insane these days? Yes and no, because it is driven. First, you know, when when you were, you know, people had to go to a video store or this or that. Now, they're, you know, uh, what should we call Pornhub has like, what, 130 billion views a month? You know, that's... You know, in so there's a, a centralized demand, and there's only so much girls to go around. And also, a lot of the business now is metrics driven. So if the girl's popular online with people, everybody wants her. Wow. And you know, like my degrees in economics, it's supply and demand, and you know, you want to get a good price for them, but I don't get every penny you get. You can get. You, because you want to be fair to people. Yeah. Because also, that keeps the girl's career going. You know, if you jack them for every penny you got, the minute the girl's career starts lagging, what, are you going to drop the rate? It's not good for the girl psychologically. It's not good, you know, for her business. But, I mean, also, if you notice, a lot of our girls, and we have no contracts, are in the business, you know, the, the mathematical average career, six months, a girl gets in porn, and, you know, they, they suck, <laughs> they lose a boyfriend, they're unreliable. The math, most of our girls have been around for years. Um, Dana DiArmond, who's on it, she's been with me like 13, 14 years. Wow. Asa Kerr, I think like nine. Uh, all, you know, so, you know, we, we, we're not just booking them jobs. It's like a career. You do certain movies at certain times to help get your awards to help you this, you know, you, you, it's oh. like a, a plan. We're like a business manager and an agent. Wow, that's incredible. So pretty much you're the best agent in the world right now. I mean, for you telling me that pretty much you're the star maker. Well, we, okay. I don't like to say it about myself, but oh. yeah. I mean, right now that so, sounds it's, like what's going on. It's kind of true. Because Derek's gone. And uh, you have a couple guys, but they don't have your stars. You have a performer of the years in the last ten years. Yeah, I mean, come on, that's a pretty, that's a big ass deal. But all, also, like I said, a lot of it's got to do with getting the right girls in the right movies, certain features right before AVN, certain companies. You know, 
it, it's it's a strategy, not just booking them scenes. So you're strategizing sometimes. You call somebody and tell them, hey, it would be a good idea to do this. Yeah, uh, producer, director, like can you do it for me? Right, recently come in, hey, do you want to do a showcase with so-and-so? And you know they want to, but you want to get it done right before September 30th, which is when the cutoff date is for the AVN nominations, stuff like that. So, you know, and and also some of the girls are producers, so they're producing. That's another thing is a lot of our girls have gone on to be directors, mm -hmm. a lot. So um, uh, Casey Calvert directing, Aiden Starr, Angela. I've heard of Aiden Starr at Evil Angel, right? Yeah, she's yeah. Been, she started in the kink business, you know, and, the, and she started out as a, She's a world famous dominatrix, wow, and she started before kink even. She was working at a at a dungeon in New York with Asa Akira, just by chance. Who is a dominatrix too? You know, she, do you know who Asa is? No, she's I mean, I heard one, of the name. Yeah, she's also one of the more famous. She just hosted the Pornhub Awards. Okay, but she's one of our girls. She's performer of the year. This that that that. But um, but yeah, Aiden, like a lot of our girls become directors. And that's also good for us because they're hiring our girls. Oh yeah, right? Yeah. This is a family business. Yeah, but, but they're, they're hiring because they're good, not just because they're our girls. Do you sometimes tell the, um, or ask the directors or producers, hey, can you make sure you get this girl into a great project? No, because you, you gotta entice them into it. It's like, this girl's great, you should shoot her for this. Then, but I'm never going to tell them yeah. what to do. Ask them. No, I mean, like like Angela White. Everybody wants to shoot Angela White. Mm -hmm. So you get the right people to shoot her at the right time. And, you know. And, and Riley Reed's booked up, so, I mean, that's already it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And she's, I'm, I'm sure she's going to be way bigger than the porn industry in another year. Really? So yeah. she's the next Jenna? Or I, she's already big. I'm sure she made way, way, way more money than Jenna ever made. No. Now even. No. Yeah. Really? Yes. Come on. They had the club, club Playboy deal. Yeah. I mean the club. Yeah. Excuse yeah. me, the club Jenna deal. Yeah, but uh, but Jenna Playboy never saw that money. She saw some of it. I'm sure, I think. No. I think the husband saw the money, and I don't think Jenna saw pretty much any of it. Really. Well, I mean, Jay's a real good friend of mine. So I mean, Jenna was was webcamming like a couple years ago. Really? Yeah. Hmm. So now I think she just got married again or something to some guy. I think so. Yeah, I, yeah. I see her. But online. no, Riley, Riley, so a lot of the girls also with social media, Snapchat, uh -huh. OnlyFans. Some of them are making over one to two million dollars a year. Really? Yeah. That is unbelievable. So that makes all those girls want to come see you because you're going to make them a millionaire. Well, they don't know about that, but they just know to come to us. But, I mean, we're not necessarily going to make them a millionaire. It's up to them. And they have to build a social following and, you know. Well, I mean, you know. would you admit that you're partly responsible? We can help them, yeah. I mean, you're, you admit that you're partly responsible. Yeah, because right? we know the people that can really put them in touch to really make you know, the big money. Uh -huh. So Riley Reed's making one to two million a year easy. I'm not saying. Well, whatever, something. She's, she's making a lot of money. That's unbelievable. You know, congratulations, Riley. That's incredible. And she's smart enough so she keeps it going and keeps going harder and harder, right? Oh, yeah. And then I've had other girls, um, I don't know if you know who uh, um, uh, Jesse Andrews is. I think I might have heard her Where, name. And she's like in mainstream now, like not, not uh, in the mainstream business world. Here, watch this, Jesse. She's in Forbes. Really? Yeah, she has like several companies now, jewelry companies, clothing companies, this, that, where she's making a fortune. This is a porno? She was, yeah, she was one of our girls. Wow, look at that face. I love her. She's so pretty. Yeah, she's five, eight. Five, Can I show her face or no? Yeah, yeah. She's... This, and she's making and, a lot of money now, you see? She has like supermodels uh, modeling for her, you know, like Bella Hadid and Kylie Jenner. And, and she looks unbelievable. Things. She's so pretty. I oh, love yeah. that face. Was she that pretty in person? Yeah. Look at that. What's your name again? 
Jesse Andrews. Jesse Andrews, yeah. Jesse Andrews. I mean, she's long out of porn, but she's... Oh, it's oh, she she okay, used, I show her a picture. She used porn yeah. to make a name for herself in real business. Wow, that is unbelievable. And so how many movies did she do? Maybe 150, maybe. What year was this? She stopped about four years ago. Wow, she's really pretty. But she started this jewelry company, which, like, like... Beyonce and all these people are wearing her jewelry. Really? Yeah, and then she started this. Oh, uh, that is amazing. Swimsuit company and Kylie Jenner and all them are you know wearing. Her. Really? Yeah. Wow, that is unbelievable. So we we want them to go on to, huh, you okay. know, do well in life. Period. And so you got Jesse Andrews started? Yeah. Well, she started. She did a couple things for. Um, like Reality Kings of Bang Brothers in Florida. She's from Miami. Uh -huh. And then she wrote me, came out here right before she turned 19. I met her, and I told her, you have to move out here and stuff. And she moved out here, and that was it. Wow. And I still see her like every other week. No kidding. Yeah. Really? She's balling out of control, making the money? Driving a uh, Rolls Royce? Or no, what? she's not like that. She's, she's quiet? Got, she had a little... Uh, like a Toyota Tacoma or something before, uh -huh. and then she got a little Jeep, and that's it. She, you'd never know by, see, but she's in Vogue and everything. She modeling. looks yeah. that face, my God, that face is unbelievable. Yeah, no, she's a model. Yeah. How old is she? Now, I'd say 24, 25, 26. 26. I mean, I feel like a dinosaur. I don't even know what's going on with these girls today. <laughs> she <laughs> stopped by AVM once in a while. Oh, uh, you know. I have mixed feelings about those guys. Uh, no, but it just got, you know. Stop by the show. booth there? I don't. The girls are signing. Uh, that's great. I Actually, believe. Riley Reed is going to have her own booth there this year. No kidding. Yeah. Wow. Did that, so that girl right there, did she do a good scene? Yeah. She Jesse was Andrews? And, and she's the youngest person ever win Best Actress in Porn. No shit. Yeah. Oh, that's unbelievable. That's great. What was her rate? I think it was like a thousand or eleven hundred dollars for boy girl. Oh, pretty basic. Like, yeah, yeah, a few years ago, yeah. Oh wow. Well, she doesn't work now. She came back. Would she make more? Or oh, people have offered her lots, like really? twenty grand, and she's like, I can't. She can't afford it. She wakes. <laughs> she makes way, way more than that. Yeah. That, these girls are really making money, so that gives them so much freedom. Yeah, that's. I tell the girls, like I learned early on, when you make a lot of money, that's freedom. Not, I remember this, that first girl that came from France, Lisa Crawford. I had a bunch of money, but I never thought about it. And then one day, she's like, oh, I want you to come to France with me. I'm like, eh. I go, I, I've been to Paris. LA. It's like downtown L.A. with museums. No, no, I take you to the south of France. I pay. I, so I went to, I get, this is like late 90s. I get on a plane. I fly to France. I get off the plane and nobody is there to meet me. And I'm thinking, fuck, what am I going to do? And then I realized, this is when it really hit me. I have an American Express card with no limit. I go, I could buy a plane ticket home or I could buy a plane. I go, I could go to a hotel or I could buy a hotel. And right then I like, you know, everything's fine. When you got money, and then she showed up. But the thing is, when you have money, that's real freedom. When you have, that's it. You got to be a slave to it, you know, till you have it, and then you can tell people you could do whatever you want or not do whatever you want, and and that's real freedom. No, that's. I mean, I could close my business tomorrow and not do anything ever. Though I couldn't personally, I couldn't not do anything. Right. But I mean, that's for you could do whatever you want. Yeah, how old are you right now? 61. 61? How do you but know? I have the body of a 75-year-old. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you told me you got in a... a back surgery, an accident, back surgery, yeah. Somebody shot at, shot at you one time and... Yeah, a long time ago. But Yeah, yeah but I had back surgery again uh, July 31st, like a couple months ago. Are you feeling better? Or are you... uh, yeah, I could barely walk then. So, I mean, I, it still hurts. It's going to hurt permanently, but at least I can walk. So Lisa Crawford, so that was a great time in Paris? Yeah, uh, we went to Cannes, Cannes yeah, Film okay. Festival, yeah. Wow, it was nice? Yeah, I went back every year for like, they had a hot door at the time too. Uh -huh. I went back for that every year for like four or five years. 
Wow, that's uh, That's my favorite place in the south of France. Monaco, you're in Monaco? It's right just above, yeah. yeah. But, you know, it's like Beverly Hills on the ocean. Uh-huh. So. So, so now this reputation, you have a reputation now, a reputation of making stars. So I can see now why you have a waiting list. And yeah. I mean, and people... I mean, we, we literally, I have... I mean, you listen, Mark. Here's like, we have a list. So... <laughs> oh, that's insane. How how many? How many is that? Well, some let, me, let me see. Can I see the names? Yeah, well, I want them to see it. But oh, okay. These are the ones that are next up. We can we, say some names or no? Uh, well, this La Serena 69 is the next one. Um, maybe Bunny Colby. Well, some of them have agents, so I don't want to see. Okay. But, and then there's some, like, the ones at the bottom are ones that were waiting and then got on the, on the site. So how many are waiting right now? Uh, seriously, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Like 11. But the thing is, most of them never going to make it because I have so few openings. Like, to have an opening, another girl has to leave. And they don't really leave. So you really created something special here. Yeah, but it's just by accident. It wasn't like a plan, you know. I mean, 11 people waiting, and you know that now Spiegler, Mark Spiegler, or Spiegler Girls, could make you a million to two million dollars a year, possibly if you worked it correctly. I mean, that is a, that's like, now you're taking a spot of a real Hollywood agent. Like, like Well, we are. I'm yeah. a licensed, just no, like, but, you, but see, you know, Hollywood is, you know, yeah. the shit, you know what I mean? And, you know, big stars, big $10 million paydays, whatever. But now if you're making a girl one to $2 million a year or helping to make one to $2 million a year, that's not, that's crazy. So now I can see girls really want to line up and no, kiss Riley, your ass. Riley's talking to a big Hollywood studio right now about the, she okay. said something about it on Twitter, but I don't think I should say anything. Oh, about maybe getting you in a movie? No, about her getting a, a deal with one of the big studios. Wow, really? Yeah. As a, a picture deal? Uh, I think a TV show. TV show? Yeah, but I don't know. I mean, oh, well, I hope so. She worked for me a couple of times. For... Riley Reed? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Not with me, but for me. She worked for my... Um, Loves Kitty, and I can't remember you know, what. By the way, you know, I don't watch porn at all since yeah. since I really got into business in the 90s. Then I don't watch this stuff anymore. Yeah, it's hard for me to watch and it, too. Also, well, A, you know them all, and B, it's everywhere now. Like I said, it's not as special. It's not mysterious. No. But, I mean, some of these girls, I don't know. I mean, you showed me a couple of girls, I might want to see them, you know, perform. But do you think, you know, that the... I mean, you're kind of telling me that, but not really, that the love, the mystique is gone for sure, but the love of the performers loving the girls, is this still there or has it been lost because the performers aren't so natural and they're more robotic? I don't know. You mean like the male performers love them? Yeah, the, when they're seeing the chemistry, the... Well, no, there's some that really, like, work together and they work together a lot because mm -hmm. they really like each other. Yeah? Yeah. And then there's, you know... And then you have your second level guys that are, you know, then you have your mopes that work with whoever. You call them what? Mopes. Mopes? You never heard of a mope? No. They're like the guys in the, the blow bangs. And they're kind of the lower end talent. Uh -huh. And they're just around to get laid, you know, they're not they don't, particularly good. No, no, really. They're just yeah. whatever. But yeah, I mean, you need a blow bang. You're not going to have you or Mark Davis show up for a blow bang. Yeah. I saw Mark Davis two weeks ago. Well, you want to hear something ironic? Yeah. He was here Tuesday. Ah! <laughs> the, he lives in Venice. Yeah. 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 yeah, I haven't seen him in like five years. He had a really interesting story. I know, he married that woman, yeah. No, but even, but I went way back. Oh. You know what I mean? No, I remember when he was a Chippendale dancer. Yeah. I went even farther back than that. But I mean, he's a you know, he's a wonderful person, you know. Yeah, totally a gentleman. Yeah, great. But you know, we go back, you know, since the no, I go he, back, you know. He what was mean? one of those first guys where the girls were always like, "Oh my God, Mark Davis," and he drove me home. <gasps> ah, I mean, they loved him. Yeah, yeah, he was well back in the day. You know, I mean, I guess you might have seen him around, but '92, right? I mean, you know, I was. I was a stud, and a lot of girls liked me, but when Mark Davis came around, yeah, they just loved him, right? They just like... be like, 
clipping his nails for them before I'm doing my nails for you before the scene. Make sure you don't get scratched and this and that. And right, he's very nice. Yeah, yeah. He's very thoughtful. And he did also the really hardcore stuff at Kink. Oh yeah, a, right. A lot. He's a real Yeah. He, I I sometimes I wonder if the people understand how great how good he really was. No, he was like like you know the girls are like that now with Manuel Ferrar. Yeah. And uh some of them with uh, uh, Marcus Dupree, you know, and uh, but he was the first one where you the girls would actually swoon, you know, they were like, Oh my god, oh my god, yeah, Mark, yeah. And even to like a Bella Danger, always wanted to work with Mark Davis, really. He was kind of making a comeback a couple of years ago, she was supposed to work with him at Kink, and then he canceled, no kidding. So she has uh, disappointed to this day, yeah. If Mark Davis is out there listening, huh? Yeah. Well, uh. I don't know, but he, he told me he loved the girls, but he says he got jaded. Yeah. You know, yeah. No, it's very, and also, I mean, you know, but a lot of the, a lot of this for the guys is in the head, you know? I mean, a lot of it. And also, a lot of them, like, uh, remember Rick Masters? Yeah. And he, him and, and Dave Hardman, they, they can oh. do anything. With any, and then one day, I remember Rick Masters started like, oh, no, I can't do this anymore. And, and, his, and then he couldn't. Yeah, because a lot of it's really in the head. He was a real performer. Yeah, and then then he psyched himself out, and then he couldn't perform anymore. And then Dave Harmon was a real performer. I mean, I, I wouldn't say they're the best, but they were good performers. No, they're they, decent. They could work with whoever. Uh -huh. You could put them with a fat girl, a mid, uh, whatever, and they'd get it up and do the scene and whatever. Uh -huh. But but the thing is, a lot of it, people don't realize. They think, oh, they're with this hot girl. Some of these hot girls are cunts. And <laughs> serious, and it's and you gotta work on them. Yeah, and and a lot of it is really in the head, and also I mean a lot of guys like man, well I don't know about Mark. They just started working out with old ladies and fat, you know. And man, well started working with old ladies. Yeah, in Europe yeah. and stuff, uh -huh. and so you work your way into it. But uh -huh. still, it's easy to get in the headspace where you just can't do it anymore. Oh yeah, yeah. No, you gotta. Um, the years will wear on you. But but let's face it, Mark. In our in my day, you know, you weren't performing. But in my day, if you didn't love the girl, you're done. Rick yeah. Masters, those are, you're done. You know, yeah. if your head gets messed up, no, that, that was it. He I remember he he met some girl. She dropped him to set, and then he just I just can't do this. He tried a few times, and that was it. He was going out with the girl Christina or Christara or something. Cute girl. And then I remember uh, Dave Hardman. He just moved to. Live on a farm or something, and or a ranch uh -huh. in New Mexico or something. But I mean, Rick was before Dave Harmon. I, I always think but it was the same because they, they were the first ones that were always doing DPs together. Uh -huh. They needed needed a DP couple. It was those two guys. Well, me and Mark Wallace always did the DPs together. <sighs> that was way back, you know what I mean? But yeah. and I mean, Peter Nora too did a lot of DPs. Like I said, I remember when Anal was not even practically. You know, oh, Karina yeah. Collins and them did anal from the beginning. Oh, yeah. But, yeah there's uh, some girls out there that did it. Yeah, so... I mean, when I grew up, my favorites were, like, Annette Haven... She was and, pretty, ...and right? Veronica Hart. Veronica Hart. And then one day, I didn't know it, but Veronica Hart had a husband named Michael who was a lighting guy for me in the beginning, and I didn't know. And I was at AVN, like, 1995 at a dinner, and he goes, oh, do you want to meet my wife, Veronica Hart? And he was, like, 60, and I'm like, yeah, right. And it was her, you know. And so I've known her ever since, you know, then. She was always working for VCA. Yeah, and she's always been, she's a hippie, like, loves everybody, totally, you know. She never was, never got to meet uh, Annette Haven. Annette Haven, I think, was one of the prettiest, and she wasn't that easy to work with, but one of the uh, prettiest girls in the history of porn. I heard she was before my time. But matter of fact, I had Paul Thomas on the show, right? Paul Thomas used to go out with her in the, I think, in the early 80s or the late 70s. They did, they did Swedish erotica together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember having a little catalog of that, too. That was like porn, a little Swedish erotica, like, you know, the videos you could buy. <laughs> yeah, those guys down there at Star Distributors. You hear about those guys? Mm -hmm. back, at, back east? I mean, what happened? No. Oh, they started all that smaller stuff. Oh, yeah. Magazines yeah. and stuff. This is 1970s. No, like I said, the catalog for Swedish erotica was like a little book like this. But it was like that Haven, Johnny Keys, just that. I saw him a couple of years ago at AVN before. He just passed away. Oh, yeah? Johnny Keys, you know, from know. Behind the Green Door. I think I met him one time. But uh, way back. He, he came to AVN a few years ago, yeah. Huh. So, so so you think these performers, so you're saying that the performers today, are they 
on I hear the stories that they take cabbage yeah, a lot of Viagra uh, definitely Viagra some of the guys shoot their dicks up some of them have implants I heard that yeah fake dicks right. I mean there's like a couple of them that I was surprised because I didn't know but um, I remember really the first you remember a girl named Bamboo little French Vietnamese girl late 90s early 2000s. I oh. remember she worked oh. with some guys she goes oh he have the fake dick Really? I went, what do you mean fake dick? It's plastic. Who is that? You, huh? I, I don't remember. Okay. But I remember that's the first time I ever heard of like an implant. I never even thought of that. But can these, I mean, these guys, can any of these guys, because it's a different world, you know, Mark Daves was in here and he's not really too keen on the fact that you consider yourself a performer and you're not really a natural performer, you know what I mean? No, and I remember Kyle Stone, because when Viagra came in, he's like, oh, these guys are in Viagra. Uh, and, you know, I mean, uh, I, I mean, shooting, I saw... He could never get up anyways, but, you know. No, but he, he was okay. He was a good actor. But yeah. uh, and he also hated every time there was a new stone, something stony. You know. But um, I saw um, Jake Malone. The uh -huh. behind the scenes thing where he shot his dick up like on camera and Whoa, yeah really? and it just gets hard no matter what uh -huh. so Viagra is still a little mind you could some people take Viagra and they still can't get I it I heard that yeah but but with that Caverject stuff and by the way I couldn't look when he was shooting it up <laughs> serious but but after you, know, you see the dick get hard like after 10, 15 minutes, and no matter what, his dick is hard. So that doesn't really count. It, it, it's good for the producer. Yeah. And the director. Yeah. But you lose some of the passion because you're not really natural, real? You don't... And, and I asked a doctor years ago when this first started. But do you lose the passion, you think? Yeah. In the scene? I mean, Yeah, cause... and a lot of it's not passion either. Yeah, that's what so, I mean. Yeah. So and a lot of them, they don't really care. But the, uh, they don't care. That's what I'm, right. I want to know. Right. A lot of them could care less. No. They're just there for... I mean, sometimes they got a good chick they want to work with, but most of the time, because there's so much business. You know, when people say the golden age was the 80s, but to me, really, there was a lot of shooting 2004, 2005, 2006. Yeah. And then now. Now. There's a lot. Really? And Yeah. And uh, so... Some of these guys are just, you know, they got to go to work. And then if you become famous, you can be more picky about who you're going to work with. Uh -huh. But if you come in now for five years, you're going to work with whoever they put you with. So, I mean, uh, this Mar you don't know Marcus. He was trained for 11 years by Rocco. Really? Yeah. Wow. And he's really good. Really? Wow. Oh, yeah. He's from Europe then. He's from Russia. From Russia, really? Yeah. But he lives here now, yeah. So he's a very good performer. He but, won Performer of the Year last, not this last day, but the one is before. He, yeah. Is he natural? Yeah. No yeah. Viagra? No, no. Really? No, if he doesn't like the girl, he won't work with him. If he gets there in the situation, that he's like, no, nope, I don't, you know, that's it. So he does, he's not a Viagra? No. You're positive? A hundred percent. Wow, that's good. 100%. So he could keep up with me, you're saying? Yeah. No, I mean, he's really good. And, you know. and the girls love, the, either they love him or hate him because he's rough. Um, sometimes, you know, he's not listening to them, so he's like a little rougher than they think. Uh, but, wow. but he, you know, he knows, like, Ansel White will shoot him out. He knows to open for the camera, this, that, that, that. He knows it's a performance. You're going to get there. But he won't do it unless he likes. Uh -huh. And he also now started his own company, and he'll only hire you know, good girls that he wants to work with. Huh. Who else is a good performer? Well, you got Manuel Farrar. I mean, he's won a lot of Performer of the Years that people love. He won six, I think, now. Yeah, it's an un um, unprecedented. There's Xander. He's, you know, he's now he's under contract to Brazos, so you don't see him too much for... Is the white um, guys? Hmm? White guy? Yeah. Uh, he's like an emo kind of guy. What's that? What's emo? I, you know. I mean, I don't even know, really. I, he's very emotional. Oh, um, emo. <laughs> okay. He, uh, I, I don't know, because there's good, there's, you know, kind of good guys that are overlooked a lot, too. Uh -huh. Like uh, Mark Wood and this and that, where they've been doing it for, but they don't make a big deal of themselves. 
uh-huh. so they get looked overlooked all the time. Um, but uh, he's still performing, Mark Wood, huh? Yeah. Wow. And uh, I mean, there, there's tons, but I mean, there's only a few really. And going back, people ask me like the difference when I started and now. When I started, there was like a hundred girls in the business, and twenty were stars. Now there's a hundred every week, and they all think they're a star. Yeah. But but also even going back that there's only a few guys. Uh huh. You know there's other guys that work you know but there's you know guys like Manuel and and these guys were they're booked you know they could work five times a day every day if they wanted. Wow. Yeah, I used to work a lot myself. Yeah. No. But, but even then there was only a few good guys. Also, when you started acting was a big part of it too. You know like. The po- PT, never a great performer, but a really good actor. Yeah. Yeah. You know what he said? I say it in every show, just want to let see your reaction. He says, listen, I don't want to have sex, or I don't have sex, unless I'm high. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to see, what do you think of that? He, I mean, PT was an unusual, you know. One of a his, kind. His own kind, yeah, his own kind of guy. Why did they call you the Shylock? Because the Shylock is a money lender, uh-huh. and that's how I got in the business. I was Jewish. You know, Shylock comes from Shakespeare. Yeah. He's a Jewish money lender, and if you don't pay him, he's out to cut a pound of flesh out of your chest. At one time, somebody owed me money, and I went over with some people yeah. with guns, and yeah. See, that's in the like, late 90s. You seem like you're pretty serious, you know what I mean? Yeah, but I'm not going to let somebody steal my money. Oh, yeah. And also, I think when I was new in the business, or you knew in any business, you got to make an impression so people know not to fuck with you. So I had to do that one time, and that was it. Yeah, I used to always knock out the fellow performers and stuff. <laughs> you ever hear stories about that? <laughs> no, but I heard you yeah, slapping around a fellow agent. Yeah. It, was that a boxing match in Vegas or something? No. Oh, it was at the UFC. Yeah. Okay. And then I smacked Reagan Center, which I always feel bad about because he's he's so tiny. He's so small. I feel, I, you know, last time I saw that guy was five years ago, and he was an extra at an art show for a hundred bucks. Really? Yeah. I really liked him. You know, tell you the truth. <laughs> you know, he had his own protocol. Oh, he had his own little scam going, but you could never sustain it. And also, if he got any good girls, they would leave. He had one. I, I Brianna Banks. She left. I remember Brianna Banks the when she was. Uh, Mariah. She was here. The first day, and she worked with Brandon Iron in Sun Valley. It was her first scene ever. Uh-huh. And, I mean, she still looks pretty good. Yeah, she's great. But she had great natural boobs. Oh, and, believable, yeah. right? And then she went and... And then she got that Bobby Vitale boyfriend that... Or, I don't know if they were married, but that kind of ruined everything. Yeah, but she was very pretty too, huh? No, and she seems... If I see her, she seems really nice still... Yeah, she, and I always tell her. I remember when you were Mirage. She lives right around the corner. So do I. As I you live, said, yeah. I live three blocks from here. Yeah. Wow, man, that's crazy. So. Oh yeah, you like the Latin girls, right? I like them brown. You know what I mean? Do you know who? You, I like them. You know. Do you like know who Luna Star is? No. Oof. Yeah. I can't hear. She's one of the top girls right now too. Mm-hmm. She's she's from Cuba, like born and grew up in Cuba. Came yeah. here when she was 15. Wow. And, um, I was in Cuba in 2000. Me and Nacho. I'd never been there. She's, she grew up with, like, no internet, no nothing. Hey, they really keep you hostage out there. Dude. And she came here, she was working three jobs, and this and that, and then she, like, saw how much people are getting paid for doing porn. She's like, I'm doing this for free? Fuck that. I'm going to get paid for that. Yeah, it's really the whole world is changing, don't you think? I mean, the man woman yeah. dynamics. Sometimes a little too much. Yeah, yeah right. Other than, wait, go ahead. What are you saying? A little too much sometimes. Oh yeah. Sometimes yeah, you yeah. can't tell them apart. Oh yeah. No, but the, you know the the old you were from the old fashioned world, right? Yeah, but I mean, my parents were really liberal, and I'm not as liberal as them. So, did you ever get married? Ever? No. You never want to get married. Now I couldn't, but, and first of all, being around these girls all the time, if you're, even, like, I've only gone out with one girl in porn, and that was terrible, but these girls, if I'm going out with somebody else, 
they get so fucking upset. No joke. What? Yeah. I mean, I won't even carry one girl's luggage because the other one, oh, you treat it. It's, it's, mm. The girls get upset if you go out with another girl? Yeah, even outside of porn. A, a porn star or just a, a girl? Just a girl. They, they, I'm like their dad. They just don't want, you know, or someone. Uh, hang on, let me just. Um, that's another thing is I, you know, we have the 14 day testing thing. But I have our girls all test every 12 to 13, so they always have a test, uh -huh. no matter what. And um, Doesn't lapse, huh? No, and also, we pick up a lot of jobs because other people... Untested. Fucked up, yeah. But, um, and what I do also is I remind the girls the day before, I text them, hey, you have to retest tomorrow. And the day of, I text them, you have to retest today to, to let me know you got tested. So I've only had like once where a girl forgot to retest. And like I said, I've only had three times ever where a girl didn't show up for a shoot. Yeah, but they know we're, you know. Well, yeah, you're pretty hardcore. No, but they learn, it's like boot camp. And they may not like it at the time, but they learn to respect it. And then they later on, they realize it was good for them. Yeah. Well, because they're making money. Yeah, and it makes them into a professional. I always get tested. I always show up. I always... You know, you know, when these girls, like, I have them, they, they live, most of them, I tell them when they start to live around here, because this is the area most of the shoots happen. Then they'll tell me, oh, I want to move downtown. I want to move down. I go, okay, but you're going to have to leave for work an hour earlier. I don't want to hear I'm late because I was in traffic, because there's traffic every day. So if you want to move far away from the shoots, then you're going to have to leave extra early because you're not going to show up late. Because, oh, I lived in Hollywood and there's traffic. That's your fault. That's not the director's problem. You yeah. Know? It's true. You And you don't want to be sitting around paying for a location, waiting for the girl because she's in traffic, because she moved to Hollywood. No way. I mean, you ever um, be on a set waiting for Peter North? <sighs> <laughs> Let me tell you something. Early on, when I was producing for David Christopher, Peter North was like known for being always four hours late. One time we were shooting something, it was... I think like in Santa Barbara, it was somewhere at the beach. We got him a hotel room there. He was still two hours late. He's got to do his hair. He's got to this and got yeah. He, he's great. Oh, he's a totally nice guy. He was here the other day. He probably looks the same too. He looks pretty good. He's sixty-two. I know, and he's but he takes like forever on that hair. Every time, <laughs> every hair is in place. But he was great. I mean, he's one of the all-time greats, don't you think? Yeah, he's. Show up, he and he could act. He right. did great, and, and the big pop shots. That pop shot is ridiculous. No, I would have to warn girls before, not, you know, but you want them to know what's coming. Yeah. So yeah. Well, he was. Well, we probably did two or three, four hundred movies together, side by side. It was good old days. Do you know how many movies you made? Well, I they said like two thousand, something like that, you know. But I did a lot of two and three scenes in a lot of movies. So the scenes, I guess, and you got to remember, when I was a performer, I only performed, really, from 90, say 9, I started, just didn't do too much work. So 90 to 2000, and then even in 97, I started producing my own stuff. Yeah. So I started becoming less easy to get a hold of and work, because I was doing oh, okay. going around the world already. Yeah, but you were still performing. Still performing. So really, I only performed really professionally. Yeah, but you're not like, you know, normal. No, you know, but you still get credits for the ones you... Yeah, yeah, but not like I... Because I was doing three to four scenes a day a, a lot of times, you know, 20, 25 days out of the month, you know what I mean? So then I slowed that down, but I did a, all these credits mostly in 10 years. So pretty much I did almost 2,000 movies in 10 years. Something like that, which is probably 3,000 plus scenes, you know? Anyway, if I was had kept working, I probably would have... 10,000 scenes probably. Yeah, because, I mean, I know Dave Hardman also, he would do... I mean, Dave Hardman, when he was working, if I booked him for a shoot, it would have to be the first shoot of the day because he would stop and do shoots on the way to your shoot. <laughs> and he would work for free. He didn't really? care. He just really? uh, wow. he was like a real sex addict. Yeah, I used so, to stop like that and do scenes everywhere, but I was getting paid. Well, no, I just want... I remember, yeah, it's like... He'd say, oh, I'm just going to uh, be there. You know, no, and he did that once. Then after that, I would book him first scene of the day. Otherwise, I wouldn't book him. 
Oh, well, I would show up for people precisely. You know, I never mess with Another Mr. Marcus. He was always late, too. Yeah, pretty late, huh? So I saw I, him Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. Well, we saw him at Jim's, right? So what was going on Tuesday? I, some guy did a documentary about me, oh, okay. and they had a screening of the rough cut. Oh, yeah? So, yeah, oh. there was a bunch of people there. Wow, who was that? Who did that? There's a guy in New York. I mean, it's, you know, they're still editing it and uh -huh. everything. Cool. Was that going to show on Showtime or HBO? He's trying to sell it to Netflix. We'll Netflix, see. okay. I mean, I, like I said, I grew up in Hollywood until something is on the air and you get paid for it. It didn't exist. Right, right, right. Yeah. So, but I'm interested in this, Mark. So you have, you told me these girls are jealous. They get jealous. I mean, so you go out with a girl and they get jealous. How how many girls? I mean, I'm in the business. I know. Girls, right? I mean, I you know, I put together, my company had 1,600 titles I put together. You know what I mean? A lot of work. 6,000 plus scenes over 20 years, right? As a producer, owner, whatever. The girls love you when you're somebody and when you got money and when you got power. So how many girls throw pussy at you? Well, the thing is, they all know that we're not going to try and bang them. But, yeah, but, uh, but I've had, like, girls that we don't represent... Or like, well, how do I get to the top of the list and da 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 da. But I think the fact that you don't bang them yeah. gives you even more power yeah. than if you did. If you did, they'd have something on you. Yeah. So I went out with a I don't remember a girl, you Claudia Adkins, I a Russian the, girl. I remember the name. Yeah, that's yeah, the only time I ever went out with a girl in porn. So. So. And that, even and back then I had the house. See, you know, I had a house. And these girls, I thought when I first started doing this, oh, they're girls, they'll clean up after themselves, da, da. no. And then I thought, okay, well, it's getting dirty. When it gets really dirty, no. I mean, eventually, eventually I got rid of the house and then got a large uh, apartment near here so they could live in there. But also in the beginning, I had all these European girls coming. Now I won't deal with that unless they have a visa because it's too difficult you got to get them the ID and the banking. and the, So now I have like an extra room where I can fit a couple of girls where I'm living now. But the last apartment I lived in was kind of by um, Topanga and Oxnard. And when I moved out of there, it was so trashed that I literally called 1-800-GOT-CHUNK. I took my clothes, my computer and stuff, moved it to my new place and had them go in there and just literally throw every single stick of wood in there out. And I had um, Jesse Andrews go to uh, living spaces and I just gave her 20 grand. And I go, just buy me all new furniture for the new place. Cause these girls are terrible. They, they were just ruin it. So when the one time I went out with like that, that girl, there was a bunch of other girls living in the house too. So that's even worse. But usually I have girls living in my house. So, you know, it's tough to go out with anybody now anyway. You got to kind of hide it from them. I mean, don't you have needs? Yeah. Oh, that's, 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 but uh, they don't have to see nothing. Oh, but you take care of your business. Yeah. But not, you know, not girls in this business. Yeah, I understand. Because you really, I can see your point, especially at your level of agency. You can't. No, and if, you, you if I bang one of these chicks, even not one of our girls, they'll tell somebody, they'll tell somebody that, that, that's... Today is way over, right? Oh, and then also with the yeah, social media. And I don't do any social media. Uh. We have no Instagram. By the way, there's a there might be fake Instagrams of me or fake agent Twitter. None of those are us. Now let that be known. Yes. So, you know, whoever is always counterfeiting people's stuff... I get girls, oh, this person contacted me on WhatsApp saying they're you. Da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how to use that stuff. I don't want to know how to use that stuff. I'm busy enough as it is. Let me ask you this question. All those pretty girls, haven't you just thought about some of them, you know, and said, God uh, damn, these yeah, are maybe, pretty but girls. Also, like, I'm to a point where they're like so young compared to me that they're like, you know, kids or grandkids. Yeah. You mean before you used to think about it or. Oh, yeah, but uh, I'm too old for this shit now. Really? Yeah. For these kids? I mean, yeah? No, I mean, like... You like older women? Also, no, no, but and also I like smart women. So, like, do you know who Lana Rhodes was? 
No. Lana Rhodes, when we had her, was like that. I'm not choked. Alana Rhodes. Lana, yeah. Blonde. England. No, no, no. Oh, no. okay. But, but this girl was like the hottest looking chick in porn, period. In the last, I'd say, 10, 15 years. Wow. But and not, you're working for you. She did in the beginning. We dropped her. But um, here. I know you can't. Wow, what a body. Huh? No, the face. She was perfect. Wow. She's beautiful. And this is your, I can't show this picture, huh? No, but here, I got. Uh, She's gorgeous, yeah. But what you a can body, see too. Amazing. Yeah, pretty. But she's not too bright, so I mean, and I think she's like one of the hottest, look, but if they're not too smart, that kills it for me. So you liked her, but you didn't like her? I mean, I think she's really hot looking, but uh -huh. because she's not too bright, I wouldn't right. really want to do nothing with her. So, but you have all these girls, and you, some, I mean, come on, man, so you're just over it by now, or? Cause Don't worry, there's other girls out there in the world. Yeah, all right. Yeah. So the drama, I mean, let's face I had Marcy Hurst here. Now, she did a lot of the vivid girls, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Right? And so, you know, Steve Hurst. But, I mean, listen, Marcy Hirsch, God, I had a girl, God, I can't even think of her name now. She was in front of me a year or two. She was from England. She was half black, half white. Uh -huh. They signed her a vivid contract. And they were doing um, Where the Boys Aren't. Uh -huh. you know, Chichi LaRue in that? Right. And they, remember, they used to shoot two of them in a row with all the Vivid girls. And that was the year that Jenna Jameson signed with Vivid. Uh -huh. and so that's five or six, somewhere around there? Yeah. The, and, and they were on set, and one of the girls didn't show up. And Marcy's calling her and calling her, and she doesn't answer. And then one of the other Vivid girls calls her, and the girl answers, Oh, where are you? Oh, I'm in Hawaii with my boyfriend. Uh -huh. And Marcy gets on the phone well, why aren't you here? And then they were so good to you. And, and oh, I said, to, I would tell you, you're so fired, don't come back to the mainland. I also told her, <laughs> I told her you should get all the vivid girls together in a room one day because they spoil them. Mm -hmm. And then, then you know, mm -hmm. you ruin them. I said, you should get them all in the room, hire a really beautiful mainstream actress, have her come in, introduce her to the girls, have her give you some lip, and then fire her in front of everybody. Just to scare them. And, but, but, you know, I, I tell that to people at Brazzers now, too. Sometimes they're too nice to the contract girls, and it just causes them. I, when that, I had that new girl work, do you want us to send a limo to pick her up? I'm like, no, because next time when you don't, the chick's going to be bitching. Oh, they didn't send me, you know. So, but I've had girls. I've had. I, when I was... Early on when I was doing this, I had this girl, Jaina Oso, Kimberly Kane. Uh, yeah, you probably remember. Yeah, Jane Oso, I remember that girl. Yeah, and so I, at one point I had seven girls staying at my apartment. Katsuni, she was here from France. Rita Faltiano, this girl Nomi, Melissa Loren. All of, so four of them, I had a fold-out couch at that place where you could sleep for. Jaina Oso uh, comes by. Kimberly Kane's in my house, and Jaina, I buzzed her in the gate. She comes in. I was on the phone with Patrick Collins, and I hear Jaina, uh, Kimberly Kane say, Hey, Jaina. And Jaina's like, Fuck you, bitch. And she just walked into the bathroom and started punching her in the face. Jaina also punched the girl out? Yeah. And, well, the, the other punched one. Punched who out? The other. They, she didn't punch her. She got up, and they actually just stood there, like, met, like punching each other. Real punches. Yeah. And then. Were they landing or not? Yeah. yeah. And then I broke them up. One grew up in strip clubs, and that one grew up on the street. They, so they could fight. Uh, yeah, and I, I didn't know, but she said that one was talking shit about her at AVN, and I didn't know about this one. Huh. 20 minutes later, they're smoking weed together in the fucking balcony, the best pals. Uh, <laughs> but, but what happened was they woke up all the European girls. They were, I go, welcome to America. <laughs> you know, but I had, uh, you know, Sandra Romaine, yeah, I think so. She, Dark hair girl? Romaine, yeah. Uh, right. Crazy, like really hardcore. Real anal girl? Yeah, yeah, she did everything. Even yeah, Kink like suspended her. She was too rough for them. But uh, I had I had, <laughs> I had, had a BMW 740IL that was bulletproof. It was... It, really? It, it, I, I, what year was this? I have pictures of it. It was uh, early 2000s. But the thing is... But the, why is it bulletproof? No, no, it wasn't on purpose. Okay. I had a... 
I had a 740i and I looked at the one of my kids and they smashed it and I got money from the insurance company I gave it to my mechanics and they went to a auction and the car just happened to be bulletproof but um, <laughs> so one day Sandra Romaine her and Jane also they were living my they go out shopping Sandra and Sand had never driven in America. And I'm like, but they were going to go to Costco, like a big box store. So they needed a big car. So uh, I let her uh, take the car. But I go, I'm worried about you. You're not used to a car this big in Romania. Oh, my boss has this. She broke the windshield, broke it, cracked it with Jane Ozo's head by accident. Because she thought it was a, a, a stick shift. And she went to shit and she hit the brake instead of the clutch. And Jane Flew through the car, hit the rearview mirror with, with her head, and cracked. The, so then they uh, came back. Jana comes in the house. I go, where's Sandra? Oh, we had a little accident. I'm like, bullshit, you would have called maybe. No, uh, we broke the windshield. No, you, you can't break the windshield. And I came out, and Sandra was hiding under the stairs. And she goes, it's not broken, it's a star. And I went out, and she cracked the windshield. Wow. So then she goes... You wanted a story. She goes, oh, I'm going to go inside and cook for you. I'll cook dinner, I'll cook dinner. I'm in my, my place, and my room was all the way at the end of the, the place. The house is all of a sudden full of smoke. And I come out there, and I go, are you burning something? No. And I look, and there's chicken cooking on the stove. Bites? No. But the house is, like, full of smoke. So I look in the garbage, nothing there. I, look at, I go to open the sliding glass door to let this. She no, 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 no. And there's a pan of chicken on fire out there. She, like, started a fire in the house, put it outside, and, and thought I'm not going to notice and just started cooking again. But, I mean, uh, Annette Schwartz started off. I have that one on tape. Annette Schwartz is a blonde, right? Yeah, tall. I, re I used her, yeah. Yeah, she was, yeah. She was, like, the hardest core chick, yeah. but... Uh, and she had a... F she had a puffy one because I remember I saw it. I like from yeah. fat pussies, right? You yeah, know? and puffy nipples. I think. Right. I yeah. So I remember that girl. I remember a little bit. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I see, we saw, I saw a lot of movies, right? I got yeah. I got uh, yeah yeah. I, just, I got on videotape. Her, you know, she started a fire in the house. Wow. But uh, but yeah, there's never a dull moment. I'll tell you that. But how about the? I mean, I love the drama. So please don't stop. How about any guy stories in the house, guys and girls, or you don't let... Guys are not allowed in the house. You're not allowed in the house? So I did have um, Kimberly Kane one time, and, and the cops were at my building, not for me, but he was, like, downstairs right under my balcony, and she started talking, and the cop, like, climbed up over my balcony into the house uh, to A hang cop? out with her. Yeah. A then, cop climbed up? Yeah, then he was making out with her. Then he left... And uh, a cop yeah. kind of illegally entered. Yeah. Then he left. Huh. Next day, she found out she had gonorrhea of the throat. I'm like, I'm hoping this guy ain't married. From the cop? She, no, she had it, so she probably gave it to him. Oh, shit. I got you. Oh, that's crazy. But I had a, another girl, um, Lucy Lee, an Asian girl. I, I remember that girl, yeah. She was like, but she would always tell, I'm the prettiest girl in porn. I'm the pretty. And, um, Oh, God, what was his name? David Aaron Clark. He was a director at Evil. Right, yeah. right. And, he's, and he loved Asian. Loved and Asian. he called me and he goes, oh, I have this girl for you. Da, da. So she was staying at my house at the beginning, and she was, like, really ghetto. And um, Like, talk loud and bullshit. Yeah. And, uh, so one day she was going out on a Friday night. I go, don't be out too late. I don't have to get up to let you in. She calls me at a quarter to three. I'm on my way home. I'm on, and there was a bunch of other girls staying at my house. And uh, so, uh, like a quarter to four, she's, you know, open the gate, open the gate. So I opened the gate. I didn't look. I just opened the gate, let her. And I opened the front door because there was girls sleeping on the couch and I didn't want her to wake them up. And as soon as I opened it, there's two cops standing there. With, they go, we brought her home for you. And I'm like, okay. And... She walks in and puts her phone down on the counter, and then she walks into the house, and the cops leave. Oh, no, the cops said to me, um, uh, she can't find her marijuana pipe. Uh, she, she said, I can't find my, and she, they told her, you, want, you might want to go down to the car and check, because when we take it in, they're going to check it, and if they find it, we're going to have to come back and arrest you. So she goes back down and doesn't find it. They're leaving. And she thought she left her phone in the car, but she put it on the... So she goes out on the balcony, it's like four... Hey! Hey! She's screaming. And then there's uh, 
<laughs> Had a little girl, Bamboo, came up to her. And Bamboo's like four foot nine, Taekwondo champion of France, little Asian. Taekwondo and, champion? Yeah. Wow. She was no, and her brother and her father. Wow. And she comes up to this girl. She's really drunk. She was stand, She walked right up to her. She goes, are you fucking crazy? You know, she just woke her up. You f and the girl just like fell over backwards over the couch unconscious. And I remember I called Wait, that. She kicked her? No, she just passed out. Just fell. Oh. <laughs> I called that David Aaron Clark at 4 o'clock in the morning. He was coming by to get her the next day to buy clothes for a feature. I go, listen, when you pick this girl up, don't bring her back. <laughs> yeah. That's it. She's done. And uh, she ended up, uh, apparently there was a warrant out for her arrest for a uh, hit and run. She hit somebody. And, uh, well, actually, you know, I think it was for uh, grand theft or something because they couldn't prove that she was the one driving the car. But she went to jail for that. She went to jail for this. Wow. But, um, I mean, our girls are pretty good. I've only had one get arrested while they were with us, which was... Uh, Christina Rose. But Christina she, uh, Rose, yeah, yeah. She was, uh, seemed like a pretty cool girl. Yeah, no, I still talk to her to this day. But she... Um, She's around? She quit like a year ago. She's Spanish. You never could she, tell she was Spanish. She, yeah, yeah, she's Mexican. Yeah. Doesn't really speak a word of Spanish. But she uh, she called me up. We were in Vegas, and she uh, was like, oh, yeah, I just got a fight with my boyfriend. And, da -da. and then, like an hour later, I get a call on the, on the hard phone... And it's, hey, and, and a guy takes the phone, it's a cop. Yeah, we're arresting her if you want to get her out. You know, she'll be at this police station. So she had gotten a fight with her boyfriend. But the thing is, normally, I like, I don't care. But she was in this um, dance routine for AVN that they were rehearsing at 10 o'clock in the morning for Stagliano. Uh -huh. So I had to go bail. And it's a scam. In Vegas, they just arrest everybody to get the bail money. Oh, yeah? The bill was $60,000 for her and the guy. And I got for, right. For what, you said? For domestic violence. Huh. And then they dropped the charges. But still, you know, you have to pay the bail. So that's their big scam out there, just arrest? Uh, yeah, and then, then you get the bail, it. yeah. Huh. And then I had another girl that same year, Jules Ventura. But she was, like, really drunk, and some guy was hassling her at, uh, right after the awards. I forget... It, the awards back then was at a different place than the, the convention. But uh, she threw a chair at the guy, missed him, and broke a slot machine. And then she went back to her hotel, and they used that face recognition. They went over to treasure, got her, brought her back, and they said, you have to pay $15,000 for the machine now, or you go to jail. So that she paid for it. Wow. She had a husband who was an ex-professional ball player or something who paid for it. But other than that, we haven't had anybody get arrested while we had them. But all these years, you know, I mean, you've got a, a fair amount of time now, you know, managing the girls. So all these years, what tricks, you know, what, you know, what experience, what, what knowledge have you learned to help keep you managing these girls at a, a fair plane? Well, no, you got to. Build them up to a certain level, but you also got to keep them off balance. You got to, like I said, someone can get really, I'm so-and-so, I'm so-and-so, I can do what I want. No, you can't. Because, you know, I, I tell them, it's not your reputation, it's my reputation. You know, and I built this up for years, and I'm not going to fuck it up for you. So if you want to do that, then you could do it on your own. But you just got to keep them even keeled, you know, like it's very easy in Hollywood or in show business to get a big head. Like I said, everybody's kissing your ass all day and, you know, getting your food and getting your clothes and your makeup. And so you just got to keep them even keeled. And sometimes that means getting rid of some of them. I mean, like another um, one of my favorite girls of all time, like we let her, do you know, I don't know if you know who Gina Valentina is. I think I heard her name. She's like, and... You know, she didn't answer the phone on time, this, that, and we dropped her. But all the other girls like, whoa, you know, and so they stay in line because they know it can happen to them. Fear factor. And, and she was, yeah, and she's like a top level, always gets nominated for Performer of the Year. She's Brazil. I mean, grew up in America, but Brazilian, really, really pretty. Really, body and, and all that stuff. But, but and I still talk to her. She actually went to that movie with me the other day. And um, 
So she knows it's not hard feel, you know, nothing personal. But if you don't follow our protocol, then then you're gone. I mean, let's let's play devil's advocate. Riley reads with you. Yeah. Right. She's your top girl, right? Pretty much. Pretty much. Are you gonna fire her? If she didn't show up for something, that'd be it. Really? It's my name. I mean, you know, you know how tough you are? You're a, you're a... Yeah, but you forget, we don't need the money. Yeah. And, and you know, and they know that. Also, you know, we don't collect all, all the money. Like, um, I tell the girls, we deal in good faith. A lot of the other agents don't like this, but whatever. Um, I tell them, we deal in good faith with you, and that's what we expect from them. So I don't have an accountant sitting there... Keep you know I have all their shoots and how much in my phone and I can add it up, mm -hmm. but what I do is I tell the girls at the end of the month they call me up and tell me how much they owe me, and then I'll just tell them how much they give me. It's usually like if a girl calls me and says I owe you nineteen hundred bucks, mm -hmm. I go give me fifteen hundred, and then I usually spend a lot of that money on the girls. All the Spiegler girls' money from the agent fees and stuff goes to George, the guy that works for me. He gets to keep it. But why do you give it to him again? I don't need it. <laughs> and he, you know, he's been with me like 16 years now. But he has three houses. <laughs> he's got a house here, a house in Vegas, and a house in Arizona. So and you just have your money, making money on it all the time or something? Yeah, and, and I have enough that I, like, never have to worry. And, you know, I take the girls out to Fleming's over here or, or to Mastro's or to this or that. I won't work for free, just on principle. Uh -huh. But also a lot of the money I make you know, we spend, you know, uh, you know, on the girls, this, the, you know, they know that I'm not using them just to make money. Uh -huh. And so, like I said, I think we build up a loyalty both ways. They know, you know, I tell like a new girl, you don't know me from Adam, but you can ask like a Bella Danger. If I tell a Bella Danger to be in South Central L.A. on this corner at five o'clock tomorrow morning, she'll be there. She knows nothing bad's going to happen to her. We're going to take care of them. And, you know, I tell them, we take care of you and you, you take care of us. You know, we make you look good. And, you know, I tell the girls, with us, you have three jobs. There's the sucking and fucking, and then there's the two tough ones. Don't make me look bad and don't give me shit to worry about. And literally, I, I literally work all day, every day. So I will answer the phone. You know, they get, you know, more work than anybody. But I will answer the phone at 3 in the morning. I'll answer the phone at 11 o'clock. And I will, uh, in that in this documentary, they, just, they have people on their speaker answers the phone in the shower. I'll answer it in the bathroom. Uh, you know, we are there. I work all the time for these girls. And, I mean, I don't expect them to be as dedicated as that. But I still expect them to not make me look bad. So, Riley Reed, like, you know... I don't think she would not show up for anything. She, you know, sometimes the girl has an outbreak. Like Riley is supposed to work tomorrow, but she started getting a cold sore on her lip yesterday, so I can't, you know. But also they're not going to, like, oh, I need the money and show up looking like shit uh -huh. and make us look bad either. And they have a reputation right now, too. Yeah. And social, I mean, especially Riley, right? So repu the social media is so wild out there that, you want to be your best, right? Well, yeah, and also, I mean, they have a reputation the other way, too. They know, people know that if they're with us, they're going to show up. Uh-huh, yeah. So. So how many girls have you said hit the road, Jack? Well, <laughs> like I, I, I said, we, you know, the agents work for the girl. Uh -huh. So I've told them I quit. <laughs> That's it, yeah. Because we, we can't. We can't fire them. We were, and I've told girls, like, they owe me, like, a few thousand dollars. But, like, I quit. You just keep the money. I don't care. Really? That's incredible. I mean, so really, there, you've got it. You've, I've never seen that. That's not the way it's done in Hollywood, right? No. In Hollywood, also, I, because um, a lot of these people fire their agents. But in porn, you really can't do that because... Okay, the way the law is written, it's we're a talent agency, like legally a talent agency. Uh -huh. So, if, like all the other agents have girls under contract. If they have a dispute, you got to take it to the labor commission. That takes fifteen months. In the meantime, that girl's not working. In mainstream Hollywood, if Gwyneth Paltrow or somebody's not working for 
you know, that's fine. And also they can book their own stuff. And porn, if a girl's not working, you know, for four weeks, let alone four months, that that's a lifetime. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, a lot of other agents hold that against, you know, over them. Like, oh, well, you know, you're not going to be able to go anywhere else. No one else can represent you. We have you under contract. And they can't. No one, no one else can. So a lot of those girls are stuck. But they know that we might let them go anytime, which is good, too. It's really a, it's a mind fuck. Kind of. <laughs> but, but it's built up on a reputation over years. Hey. Let's like I said, Jane Osa, we let her go. She was my favorite girl of all time. Really? Yeah. Oh. But she got into drugs and stuff. Then she ended up getting arrested. That's yeah. a big deal to say, the favorite girl of all time. Yeah, all the other girls know it. They don't like that either. Wow. But who's your favorite girl? Who's your favorite girl? Yeah, I know we used her once or twice, I'm sure. Yeah, no, no I'm, I'm 100% sure. She was like, uh, yeah. she was Malaysian and Irish. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. And um, dark-haired girl, you're saying, right? Yeah. 5'5", five, five, something like that? 5'4", 5'5"? Five, five, five? Yeah, right here. Yeah, right. I know. Yeah. She was naturally a great performer. Just that. I mean, let, let's face it. Mark has the best girls in the world. The best girls. And this is his favorite girl of all time, Jaina Oso. She was a good performer, right? Yeah. Street Fighter too. Yeah. She grew <laughs> up on the streets. Yeah. yeah, she's great. I remember her. I think she... she yeah, was... and the thing is, she was... I mean, she did... Double angle before that was popular. So was that like 2006, 7, 8 when she was really it was around? At least, I think she'd been gone about 10 years. So at least, yeah. And the thing is, then she went back to Hawaii, then she came back here after, and she was like delivering drugs for some drug dealer and got arrested. And I helped her with that. And then I called her father in Hawaii. He sent her back, I said, don't ever let her come back to the mainland. Just, there's some people, there's, that's, some people, this business is not for them. A lot of, like, brand new girls, 18, 19 years old, if they've never done porn, I talk them out of it. Because I tell them, you're going to get gonorrhea, you're going to get chlamydia, you're going to work with ugly, smelly guys, ugly, smelly girls. It's serious. It's really a profession. It's not like, oh, yeah, it's glamorous. A lot of times, you maybe can work up to that, but a lot of times, you're going to be trudging... You're, you're sick, you don't want to work, you don't feel like getting up, you do tough shit, you know. It's, you know, if you're working a regular job in an office, you can't just, like, I don't feel like coming in today. Yeah, I mean, but you really want to talk some of the pretty girls out of it? Yeah, here. Recent ones. Where is it? It's because you're too um, no, I, they, Once you get into this, that's it. It's, it's forever. Yeah. And some of these girls don't think of that. Here, I just talked this girl out of it. This girl's really hot. Yeah, she's cute. Talked her out of it, huh? Yeah. Actually, I have a girl now, Eliza Barrow, is pretty popular. When she first wanted to start, I talked her out of it. I talked Dana DeArmond out of it years ago, and she ended up in porn. So but how many girls, Mark... What's the number that you said to hit the road or you quit on? I'd probably say, I mean, some girls, you know, quit the business and they get a boyfriend or, you know, I've had some like, uh, like A.J. Applegate, you know, got pregnant or uh, 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 Carly Gray or this or that. So a lot of them slowly get out anyway. Um, but I'd probably quit on maybe a hundred. Uh, uh, it's probably maybe less, but over because we don't take a lot of girls and they stay along. So we've only probably represented a few hundred, maybe three hundred girls over the the course of all these years. Well, uh, uh, that that's interesting. Yeah, that's I like to know that. Yeah, three hundred girls. I mean, I've never counted, but that's uh, what I guess. But you know, you would think you know me thinking right now as a um, outside person, but I'm an inside person too is that the work you put in, you know, the work you put in, the dedication, and the prices, everything you do, you do a lot of things that a lot of people don't do. You know, you babysit all the time, 24-7.
And that's your whole life. You dedicated your whole life. People have to understand. That's not just the nine to five. That's, no, that's all the time. That's you, your whole spirit, your whole, your whole self, your whole soul. You've given to these girls and your business. Yeah, I mean, the last day I took off was in 2008. Yeah, why? why? You never have time I, for yourself? No, I bet. That's what I said. Is I wish there was like a two-hour period during the day when I knew my phone wouldn't ring. I could relax, but I can't. But also, I can't not work. I, 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 you know, if I had nothing to do, that would drive me crazy too. It's like a Zen master. You're trying to do something over and over to to get it perfect. Just somebody like somebody makes swords in Japan, and you know they're top, but you still constantly make. You know, to make it a little bit, a little bit, you know, people may not even notice, mm -hmm. but it's something like that where it's just, you're just driven to do that. So you're always trying to make it a little bit better? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm i the one, like I said, I'm kind of the one that started driving the girls' sets, the, the model houses, but also I, I, you know, I remind the girls to get tested each day, the day before, that day. I send, like if our girls are working tomorrow, I send the companies their testing IDs today just so they know that, you know, things I don't have to do, but it makes us better than everybody else. Not to make us better, but I think, like this, this director's shooting this girl, like like today, one of our girls is booked with a girl from another agency, and that girl didn't have a test. They get on set, they look, oh, I don't want them to worry about that. So I make sure, you know, they have the testing ID the day before, or even if they send me the the info a few days before, you know, I'll make sure they have the testing IDs then. But, you know, there's like a lot of little things that take a lot of the worry out of the production for, you know. And also, I think some of it's because I produced movies before. I was going to say that. You right. know what's going on. Right, and you, oh, when, when I said about being fair about rates, you know, when somebody, like, I've had girls... And they're like, well, it's a longer day with this director. Do I get paid more? And I'm like, well, if you do a short day, do you get paid less? No. But I mean, if it's a long, you know, I tell them before this director takes forever. You're going to be there a long time. If it's a feature movie, like when you start, you know, you got booked for a project. You know, it's like a, a, yeah. a thing. You're there till whenever it's done. I never said yeah. a word. Yeah. And uh, now it's like it got to be. In the era of Jim South, but even more now, it's like by the scene. So, well, how long am I going to be there? What do I have to do? So I tell, if it's a feature movie, which take forever, I tell the girls kind of jokingly, but, you know, in a feature, you're getting paid for the acting, not the fucking. You're getting paid for the waiting around. You get, you know, you know, I mean, if it's over 12 hours, I'll charge them a little bit more. You know, but fair, like 100 bucks, 200 bucks. But, you know, I try to do little things that make things better especially for the girls, but also you, I think it's good business to be fair with the producers and directors over a long time. There was a, uh, uh, I remember a, a famous agent got a girl in like 2004, 2005, who was really popular, big natural tits, and he was charging back then like 2000, 2500 for the girl, for boy girl. And every and she did only okay scenes, but was really hot. Was it start with initials AR? Uh, what was her name? Blondish? No, no. Okay. But uh, not Amy Reed. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. Oh, I, I thought you made her, her first name. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing is, everybody shot the girl, you know, a few times. Uh huh. Then they got tired of it, and then you're not going to lower the rate. The you know if I, it ruined. I mean, she could have shot a lot longer. Maybe at less, you know, fifteen hundred. You know, could have shot longer, but because of her looks, mm -hmm. and had, but because you're jacking everybody for all the money. Then later on, you can't go to them. Oh, show, shoot for fifteen hundred now. They might shoot or they might not, and if they do, they're gonna be upset because they paid more before. But eventually, that ends the girl's career. Nobody's hiring her, and I call it the Amy Reed syndrome. Yeah. Serious, and I mean the girls don't know about that. But even Sasha Gray, when she was at her top in the business, I charged a fair rate. I could have charged more, but that would, you know, there was always ups and downs, this that, and you want to be fair every which way. Yeah. So I think, and I think it's a good business model. I think it's great because you don't have to have something on the back of your head. 
No. Like a little, like, you know, I should have did this, should have did that. You no, just, and also we charge everybody the same rates, too. So it's not like, how much did I charge this one? How much did I charge uh -huh. that? And yeah. I remember early on Vivid. Back then, first of all, to get, you know, Vivid, they used a lot of the girls over and over again. To get girls into Vivid movies took me several years. And then really? one time oh. Shiler, yeah, because they used a lot of the yeah. same girls. So Shiler wanted one of our girls, and she was booked for some smaller company. And he's like, yeah, but we're vivid. And I'm like, hey, you wouldn't want me to do this to you. I'm not going to do it to them. They didn't like it at the time, but then they understood, and they, they respected that. And so people know we booked a girl for you. If a bigger shoot comes on, comes along, we're not going to drop you for them. And I've had, like, what they offer a lot more money or this, that. But no. And you said no way, no money. No, it's it's not fair to these people are trying to make a living too. Just mm -hmm. because you happen to have a lot more money, and, and in the long run, people will respect that. They know if they call me up and ask for this girl, she booked that day. We're not going to move everything around. You know, if, if it's if it's possible for that company that has it already booked to move it a day or two, fine. But if they can't. They booked her. They got her. Now, I I remember using some of your girls because you know I you know produce a lot of movies, and when your girls came, there was never a, I shot a couple of your girls myself as a cameraman. You know, shoot my in yeah. a gangbang right, and I never had any worries. So I mean, I could see I've never seen girls so professional as the girls that came from you. No, and that's kind of the goal. And like I said, that's a great long term business model. Yeah. It it. it, it sustains itself so i mean so you would sit there and tell them the pros and cons and how to move and how to react on a set well I mean, to... i'm not telling them sex wise but i'm telling them first of all i sit down with people say how do you know who's good i sit down and talk to most of these girls and the girls that i want you could tell they're perverts they're not doing it they're doing it for money but they're doing it because they like in that documentary about danger said i've done a lot of things i would just do it for free you know, I mean, I would never let them say that to a director, but you want them really liking what they're doing because they'll last a lot longer. So on that point, you know, hold on one second. All the girls you have or 90 percent of them are all super freaky, kinky, twisted Females? Uh, a lot of them because, like, you've seen some of them before they even did porn. Oh, yeah. You don't have to tell me that girl's going to get upset because they added an extra penis or something. Uh -huh. um, uh, you know, and also I tell them when you're on set, if something changes, you call me. You know, don't argue with anybody. You have a problem, you call me, and I'll settle it for you. We'll look bad for you, too. But, um, you know, some of them say they are and may not be. But um, Aiden Starr said it best in an interview. Uh, they go, how does Steve know? He, he, she goes, he has a good bullshit detector. You know, so if somebody's telling you to bullshit them, usually, you know, we're not. And some girls, yeah, 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 you, oh, do you do it? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, uh -huh. Those ones are usually not going to be any good. So Riley Reed is a super freaky girl? She's way more freaky than most of what anybody has shot her in. Really? Yeah. And the thing is, when she started with me, she's like, I want to do anal, but I can't. I can't fit the dick. You know, I've tried. Nah, nah, nah. And then finally she found a boyfriend who had, like, I guess, a decent... Not giant, but deep, and uh -huh. fit it. And now she's known as an anal, you know. Really? Fuck, yeah. <laughs> anal, double anal, this, that. Da, da, da. Uh -huh. But stuff that she wants to shoot, which she has a company that her website's really one best. That website. Da, da, really? But she's like, does these really out there things. And they're very cinematic and, you know, but stuff that most people never think of. Okay. So, you yeah, know, it's like, yeah. So she's a very surprising person, huh? Yeah, like she's in an insane asylum, and the nurse brings her, you know, she rapes the nurse, and uh -huh. just that, but very stylized. Uh -huh. oh. So so I still want to know, why the hell don't you take a vacation, man? Like I said, I you know, I went in the hospital a few weeks ago for back surgery. Even then, the guy, Georgia, works for me, he had this phone. But I had a backup phone, and if you had any problem, call me. Gave all the girls my other number. I was still answering the phone for them in the hospital. But like I said, if I, I can't, I couldn't. You can't let go. If you put me on a cruise ship after about an hour or two, I'd be like, I, I got to do something. I got to do something. I just can't not, I can't just sit there and do nothing. 
let it be known. Mark Spiegler I'm, admits to no vacation for the rest of his life. I'm He's, a workaholic. I mean, I just, I really am, and not, not on purpose. I thought I was a workaholic, but, you know, I guess you got me beat. You know? I mean, I average uh, three hours and 26 minutes a night sleep. Wow, really? And, and I didn't know it was that bad. Today, I actually That's got not good for you. Watch this. I, one of the girls got me a Fitbit last year. Wow. Okay. Last night, I got four hours and 56 minutes. But look, last week, I averaged three hours and 47 minutes. Can I show this? Yeah. That's my average, the dark Look at Look at this. So you think you want to be a big agent, powerful agent? Can you deal with this? Look at that. No sleep. And believe me, there's some stress with this. Some days in there, I get like an hour and a half. Yeah, look at that. Hour and 21 minutes? What the hell? That is unbelievable. That's not good for your heart, man. Uh, it seems to still be working. Yeah? Everything's good in your heart? Yeah, when I went, the only wrong with me is my back. Huh. Okay, wow. That's incredible. You're my shortest day was 29 minutes. September wow, come 29. on, 29, your body doesn't start getting weird? Let's watch this. September 29 last year. I, I even remember, yeah. Uh, I was on a mainstream movie till 5.30 in the morning. Here you go. 29 minutes. And then I got home at 6.30. No, I got home at 6, went to bed at 6.30 and was up at 7. Your head doesn't start hurting? You get headaches? No? I get a little tired, maybe, but that's it. But no headaches? Huh. I, when I used to shoot, I used to uh, be out there in Europe or Asia or wherever. You know, I'd put everything together, all that. And I'd be up for four days straight, usually, you know, without sleep. But then your head starts getting kind of weird, you know? Uh, I guess that's all I need. Yeah. And they say as you get older, you need less sleep. Yeah. Right? Oh, incredible. So that, uh, that's amazing, really. That Really, that's unbelievable. So for every girl out there that has Mark Spiegler as an agent, I guess you better feel lucky because uh, you know who the hell else is going to work this hard, right? Oh, yeah. No. No, I mean, other agents, they may be... But, I mean, they have families or this or that. And yeah, life. They can't, yeah, they can't dedicate them. <laughs> serious. Mark has given his life. No, this is an incredible information I'm finding out. This is serious. I'm not playing around. This is, this is serious. This is, you know. It wasn't on purpose. It just mm -hmm. worked out that way. Well, it's, it's a, very interesting. So tell me about some of the your favorite directors and producers. Is there anybody or over the, the time past 20 years, anybody you like you can bring I mean, to the top. See, uh, the early on, you know, David Christopher was—he's the one that kind of invented the, the, the really hot chicks, the really hot mansions, and you know, like, yeah, all that really? kind of okay. stuff. Um, Stagliano. I mean, the the early directors that I really liked at, were doing porn for the right reason because they were perverts. Whether John Stagliano. Um, um, from Elegant the Angel, uh, Patrick, Patrick Collins, they were perverts. Joey, Sil oh, sorry, Joey Silvera. I saw Joey at that thing the other day. Joey really? really go yeah, I know he doesn't go out much. You and saw that was a Tuesday? He, yeah, I came to that thing. Yeah, wow. but they they're just perverts and shoot what they like. Okay. And I think everybody's a pervert that but doesn't want to admit it. But they're perverts that shoot what they like, and that's why they were popular. So, like, a lot of those early... Now, there's some, but most of them are just by the numbers, you know. It's it's a, it's a become, like, a, a, a corporate business. So that's what I was going to ask you, you know what I mean? So, do you see... So, you're telling me, pretty much, that it's not the same. No, I mean, I used to go out with a girl in the, like, very early 80s, who was an executive at Warner Brother Records. And back then, like late 70s, early, it was like everybody was friends and they knew each other and they parties and, and this and that. And then it slowly became really corporate. It forced out the, the human relations kind of part of it. And this business, there's some, you know, you like some people more than others, but a lot of the directors, you know, they have to hit marks. They got to shoot this many scenes a month. They got to shoot where the company tells them. With what, you know, da, 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 da. it's like uh, metrics driven, not necessarily a lot of room for the, a lot of the directors to do what they want. So, so pretty much the pioneers before them have 
discovered pretty much, right, and manufactured regimens or designs that they can follow and just knock them out without any passion. Except right, it's like, like Boogie Nights, where they're telling the guy, oh, you're going to start shooting video. I'm never going to shoot on it. He was, like, passionate about what he was doing. This is what I want to do. You know, and that gets shoved out over time. But any industry where you start an industry and it makes a lot of money, over time, you know, those early pioneers get pushed out and it becomes mechanized. It becomes, you know, like a formula, like a factory. I mean, farming is like that now. Everything was just factory, like, you know, where farmers used to care about the land. And now it's like big conglomerates, just like they buy all the property. You know, and McDonald's is, you know, making your burger from the farmland to, to the grill. They don't care really about the process. They just uh, care about making the money. So now, so the, because I had some people tell me this, you know, Mark Davis, you know, but... Some people think it's not as, it's so a little more soulless. Yeah, so I mean, it's more corporate and less, like I said, a lot of, Russ Hampshire, a lot of those guys at the beginning, you know, they, they want to make money, but they want people to like do what they like. And, you know, if it costs a little extra here, you know, he'll throw in the money, whatever. Yeah. Um, but now it's like pretty, you know, pretty corporate. Uh, do you um, miss those days of it not being so corporate? Uh, yes and no, because you could get more for the consumer, more product that a wider group of people might like because it's what like perverts are making. But on the other hand, I like the corporate part because a lot of people I deal with are like professionals now. So it's really <laughs> difficult. And I get this dealing with mainstream where they're artists. And like you're asking them 10 o'clock the night before, well, what's going on? To, I don't know yet. Da, da. So now it is good where I get the call sheet, you know, a week before and who's, you know, and, I, and a lot of the girls are flying places. So you got their flight info, hotel info. And so for me, them being professional and corporate is good. But I mean, there was people, I don't know if you remember, like Chico Wang, you remember him, Wanker Wank? Yeah, I he, think I heard his name. He used to work for Diabolic. And, was, and like, I mean, sometimes it'd be like 4 o'clock in the afternoon of the shoot, and I'm calling him, is this shoot still happening today? Do you have the, uh, yeah, just tell the girl to come to my house at 5 o'clock. Uh, you know, that. and, uh, uh -huh. but that's like maddening as a as a yeah. agent. And for the girls, you tell them, go, yeah, you're still shooting today. I don't know what it is, but you just, you know, call them. Even now, like sometimes, I'll, it'll be like, one o'clock, two o'clock in the afternoon, the day before the shoot, and I'm like, you're still working tomorrow. I'm still waiting for I don't want them to think I'm an idiot. Uh -huh. You know, let them know it's the director's idiot. It's still waiting to get the info from them. So now you're like in the military. Yeah. Everything's I'm, punctual. I'm, well, I try, and you try and actually train the directors. Like, uh -huh. like actually a former Spiegler girl, uh, Gia Paloma, is now working for Blacks on Blondes, and she's, you know, she'd been in porn, but she has no production. And so I told her, like, at the beginning, listen, when you send out the info, you want to say, you want to send it, I, I gave her a little template, you know, who, you know, or, or the, the, the call time, the address, whether there's makeup or not, you know, what kind of wardrobe, what kind of scene, with who, da, da, and any special notes, you know, and you train them to give you the stuff properly so I don't have to keep calling them I mean I average close to 100 calls a day and sometimes up to 700 text that's not it just keeps track of uh, text messages and emails and um, that's a lot of uh, typing huh like shh and I and I hate typing but like um, see today I've only had which today is quiet. 117, but if I go back, like last Monday, 771 text messages and emails, mainly text. Wow. Last Friday, two hundred. Last Friday, 443. I mean, you don't have a secretary. This is all you. Yeah, it's all me. Literally. Because I, that's another thing. Even when I was producing movies, I hired a production manager once, but I still did it myself because I want to make sure it's done right. So I just, 
you know, I just, it's a court, but I just don't trust anybody else to do everything properly. You're a micromanager. Yeah, but I want everything to be done exactly correct. But it's working, unbelievable. Yeah. But, so right now you're telling me that pretty much the fun is over in porn? No, I mean, there's some, you know, like, uh, actually Angela White stuff that she makes is like what she wants, Riley's. There's still some, like, the more outliers, not the uh -huh. not the mainstream. But being on the set is not like it once was. No. Nah. Like, you're it's, fucking it's, in the back room, you're having fun. You, so you don't want that because, well, who did that person fuck before? Da, da, da. Uh, I had that happen. No, no, another agent had that, you told it. Where some girl was fucking some guy, and then that guy's test was expired, so the other girl wouldn't work with her. Uh, you know, it's not but, the same. No. So all these years, you know, you said you already had money, but if you didn't have the money you had, you have, would you have made a great living for yourself? I mean, I would have made, yeah, probably would have made more because I would have kept more. But also, like I say, having money affords me the ability to be nicer to the girls and not make them do every little job and try and get every cent out of them. You know, like, do, like, all these BJ scenes with, like, little guys that are nobody, you know, stuff that, you know, they're not going to, like, working with or, you know, so we don't, you know, it, afford, it, it makes it so I can be nicer to the girls. Mm -hmm. Do the... Um Producers or directors ever complain about some of the prices being higher than others? They did five years ago when it was switching over kind of from DVD to Internet or maybe a little more than that. Some of them never, like Mitch Spinelli or some of them, they just complain about the rates, but they never, you know, you have to evolve. Uh, like I've, I've said before, the last guy making wagon wheels for stagecoaches was complaining, all oh, these fucking cars. They're making cars, you know, you have to evolve or, you know, you die. Fuck. And it's serious. So I remember, like, at the end, he was complaining about the rates and set. But the girls are working all the time. It's not that the rates are so high that they're not working. So it's not the rates, it's the companies. Uh -huh. What happens, Mark, when a company doesn't pay you your fees? Well, here's the thing. First of all, I don't see it. So George gets the money, the guy that works for me. Uh -huh. He goes to the PO box. He uh, picks up the money, deposits it in the bank every Friday, comes to my house, writes himself a check, and leaves. So I'm sure he'll probably lean on them, but pretty much everybody pays because they want the girls in the future. Yeah, I mean, your girls are obviously, you really have a powerful position. Yeah, but you don't want to abuse that either. We're not telling everybody, you know, what to do and... Mm -hmm when to do it and this and that, which other agents have done before. I mean, you're kind of like the Ford agency or the, um, what's the one the, in Hollywood, you know? The, yeah, I mean, one? CAA or whatever, yeah. Uh, uh, but other people, actually, uh, I was in the Hollywood Report and they compared it to some boutique Hollywood agency. We just have a small group of, like, top uh -huh. people. Well, okay, so some of the big agencies have so many people, pretty much? There's some smaller ones that have just big stars. Okay. A few. Yeah, they can put... And also, they're, they're also handshake. They don't... Uh, really? Yeah. No, oh, that's like what you got. Yeah. Yeah, because they're getting them actions and work, and they can right. represent but, them. And also, I think that makes the agent work harder, because you can't just, like, sit yeah. back and tell a girl tough shit. You can't go anywhere. You don't have a... Yeah. You, you have a contract. It's a great motto. It's a little bit kind of like Jim South's a little bit in the old time. Yeah. The beginning. I mean, but Jim South only worked Monday through Friday right. from 10 to 12 and like 1 to 5. Yeah, he had a family, yeah. But also at his time, he would just give the people a number and the people would call the girls directly. Yeah, you put a lot more heart. I won't say heart, but time. His son wasn't at the birthday party the other day. No. He had to work or something at the... Uh... Only love for Jim, so we... Only put the top. Yeah. So I, you know, I always compare, right? In my time. So maybe it's kind of a way, but let's just say my time pretty much, or even because you came in 85, pretty much. So in 75 or 72, 71, it really started, right? It really had like a 30 year span of wildness, which I always compare to the old Wild West, right? Wild West only had about 25 years. Civil War. 
Oh no, I know. By, so, yeah, by yeah. nine by nineteen eighteen ninety is done, kind of you know railroads and all that. Start, yeah, right. So you had let's say that uh, male performers are gunslingers, right? You might have Billy the Kid, Jesse James, who really wasn't a gunslinger, just a bank robber, but you know he slung his gun. TT boy, you know what I mean, <laughs> gunslinger. Then you had the company owners, like maybe VCA or, or um, let's say, Stagliano, you know what I mean? Vivid. They were mine oper gold mine operators, right? They had the big strikes. They had it going on, right? Yeah. Who are you in this realm of the Old West? Me? You're some, yeah, no, because you, you're part of it. You know, who are you? I mean, I, I, I'd have to actually think about that. I mean, I, I'm just a guy that... Oh, you know, you have, you're a character. What character are you? You know, you're a character in this world. I'm probably just a saloon keeper, seeing him coming in and out and, and hiring the girls to entertain the guys. Whorehouse? No? Yeah, yeah Whorehouse? that's a saloon keeper. Saloon, yes. Most of those were, yeah, bordellos. So the um, Birdcage Theater owner in Tombstone? Yeah, you got to, and you, but you got to, you know... but. But a lot of them ran dishonest gambling, which, you know... Which you don't do. No, nah, I, I don't think... I'm honest about everything because I don't want to worry yeah. about ever having... You know, looking back and, and worrying about somebody catching up to you, like catching you do something. So, you know, if, if you know, we charge everybody the same way this, way that, because that way it's just... I don't have to... What do we charge this guy? What do we charge that? You know? Yeah. And, 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 of course, everybody's going to talk amongst themselves now anyway. So saloon keeper, yeah. bordello, yeah, saloon. Yeah, operator, yeah. I, I always thought myself, you know, I always try to be as straight as I could be. And that's because I never want to hit the streets and somebody talk shit or say something. They talk shit anyway because I was doing well, you know what I mean? But I always was pretty direct because if you say something, I'll come confront you because I do the best I can, right? Yeah. But let me give you a quick example of an old West guy. Jesse James. He's supposed to be pretty straight, right? He robbed banks. He'll kill you if you get in the way, but he wasn't supposed to be anything less than that or anything more than that. But when he wanted to gunfight you, right? Because he will test you, supposedly, in the book. He will look you face to face and not do a cheap shot, but let's go. Well, you know, in, uh, in the real Wild West, one of the only real, like, you know, hands, you know, real shootouts was at the OK Corral. Yeah. I mean, one of the actual, you know, draw, boom, 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 boom. Most people just shot each other right. when they weren't looking. Most. Yeah. Well, Bill Hickok has some, you know. But, you but, know, what Jesse James said well, about... Bill Hickok was known for standing up and shooting straight. Right. He didn't get all excited. He aimed, boom, that was it. But you know what Jesse James said about Wild Bill Hickok? He said, hey, he's a killer, but he's a little crafty on the way he's going to kill you. Because he had some gunfights like that. Okay, Carell, he had some, right? But the story, I don't know if you heard the story. We'll make it very quick. He was in Texas. Jesse James laying low, 1874, or something like that, hiding out, right? He says in South Texas in 1874 was full of gunfighters, right? They're, you know, they're all outlaws, tough, rough. Crazy wild guys. Jesse James Lowe, dressed up with glasses or whatever. He's dressed up real quietly. You can't see who he is. You don't know who he is. He's high. He's got, you know, a reward for him, right? So he's hiding out in Texas, supposedly. This is out of his autobiography or biography, which I think was autobiography because yeah. he probably wasn't really killed, you know, but I wasn't there. So while Bill Hickok comes into town, right? But he's very quiet for most of the day because everybody there is a gunfighter. Right, and he doesn't come up well, to I mean, you. These are actual people; they're not idiots. Like I'm gonna right. <laughs> pull a gun on everybody in town. And but, but listen, so the last day while Bill Hickok is there, he goes up to this guy in the glasses, right, <laughs> and pulls the gun, shoots a tree right next to his ear, or something like this, right? Very disrespectful, and go, I'm, I'm. Shooting so straight, I could be a barber, right? Jesse James pulls out two guns, pop, pop, into the same hole and says, well, motherfucker, 
you better start cutting. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, well, I've been scared and scattled the along. Way, the reason a lot of the, the Wild West was that period was because all these people were Civil War exactly. veterans. Exactly. And, you know. Yeah. Well, it's, Jess James, supposedly you would come in there with six guns, ride on a horse fast, and be able to shoot down 20 people, 30 people at a time. Yeah, and they, they were left with nothing to do after, you know, yeah, the Civil exactly. War. exactly, so, which know. made it the Wild West. And and the North didn't treat the South very well after the war either. No, it was very... Carpetbaggers. Very that. strange stuff going yeah, on, so huh? They, they had a lot of these guys that were raiders, yeah. Yeah, very crazy. So if you could describe your experience in the business, you know, you've had a great experience, it seems like. For the last almost, I mean, this more than 20 years because you're around. So you've been here quite a while, really. How could you describe everything in two words? Could you tell me that? Two words. Wow. That's not one of them. Um, <laughs> now, corporate profits. Now. Now. But the whole time. But uh, I mean, because it used to be like a family. Thing. Yeah, it was like you'd hire like Ginger Lynn or this that to show to shoot a movie, and it, you know they get there. Okay, you're gonna do this. You do okay, 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 okay. But then now it'd be like, oh well, how much do I get for this scene? How long do I have to be here? What about the, they didn't mention the blowjob? You know, like their last minute, the director go, oh wait, blow this guy, da, da. and now it'd be like, oh, you didn't mention that, and so it's gotten very corporate, but. I mean, I don't know. It used to be like kind of family kind of thing. I mean, Boogie Nights is actually, it's stylized, but it, uh, it was like a small group of people who knew each other. And, you know, like the camera guys, this, that would change out. I guess in that way. Yeah. Say, yeah. But now it's like a much bigger group of like just corporate whatever. So I don't know. Before it used to be more, more like family. The two words. Family to corporate. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's three. If you could change anything in the business to make it better, what would you change? Uh, actually, I would uh, have the companies have to pay uh, uh, into a health care fund for health, you know medical insurance for the girls. For the, for the girls or just all the talent? Yeah, for, well, for me, girls. But talent in general. Because that's like uh, a big career. Girls get sick, they... You know, when I just had my back surgery, it was $160,000. Oh, I might have a medical insurance, and I encourage a lot of our girls to get it. But a lot of girls don't get it. Something happens, and, you know, they, they go bankrupt, or, they, you know, they disappear. And uh, technically, if you're working for somebody, they're supposed to accord you, you know, uh, medical insurance. It's hard because you work for different people every day, but maybe if they made a big fund... And everybody was, you know, covered by some kind of industry medical insurance. It's corporate now, like you're saying, it's more corporate than ever. But how do you divvy up who pays what? Oh. That's the hard part. That's like the testing fees. Like um, MindGeek, who owns Brazzers, refunds all the girls some of the money for their tests. But, oh. you know, they get a check from, from FSC every month for their share of whatever. But so how do you figure out who hired them? Free Speech Coalition? Or what is yeah, that? Yeah, MindGeek gives them money every month, wow. and they send a check to the girls to refund them for some of their their testing expense. That's really nice. But, I mean, that that's nothing compared to medical insurance for everybody. Oh. I mean, medical insurance for... Uh, one of our girls has it. Um, she's, what, tw 20? It's like $350 a month for a decent plan. That's four grand a year. I mean, that could, if you got, you know, a thousand girls, that, that's four, four million. There's more than a thousand girls. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't know, medical insurance would be good. Yeah, everybody pitch in, huh? Yeah. I mean, that would have been nice when I was an actor, but yeah, I was healthy, though, you know. But yeah. No, but what if you get hit by a car? Yeah. Why can't you cry? Uh, I tell the girls when they're new, you think you're going to be making this money? I go, what if you get hit by a car and break your leg? What are you going to be doing, BJ scenes off your couch at home? Of course, now they do have only fans and this and that where they could do little stuff at home, but you're still not going to, you know. And, and the medical bills are just crazy. 
Yeah, I mean, insurance, I mean, yeah, medical care is... If anything's great. wrong with you, like really wrong with you, you got to go to the hospital. It, it seems way out there, right? Like, yeah. for, uh, I was in the hospital for, I think, eight days, and the surgery was 123000 and then they sent me another bill for 35000 36000 the other day. Thank and God you, I got medical insurance. Full full medical? I cover, yeah, I only had to pay uh, 1300 bucks. Wow, that's great. That's a great deductible. Wow. Well, I, yeah, when I got the medical insurance, I just said, give me the best plan you got. How so much is it? I pay a thousand a month, but I mean, I'm 60 oh. something and yeah. I have, you know, pre existing conditions. But still, um, the funny thing is, when I got Kaiser, I had another insurance and they closed down in California. I got Kaiser in February a few years ago, and the next month my back went out, luckily. But I mean, that was I probably. About five hundred, four hundred, five hundred thousand in medical insurance, and I, you know, didn't have to pay nearly anything like that. But I mean, I have to pay two fifty a day for every dem in the hospital, up to five days, and that's it. So, yeah. I'm getting emails and text messages. All right, man. <laughs> when, what do you see the future of the? Double I business? think a lot of it's switching over, like Pornhub. You know, has their Pornhub affiliates with the girls now, um, and a lot of girls are making money off of that too. So you think that the male actors are going to be working for the girls? The you know some of the male actors have. Uh, uh, there's also other social media like Manuel does Twitch. You know what that is? Uh -uh. It's like gaming online. Oh, uh -huh. he gets paid for it, like a lot of money. But wh what does that mean? I mean, they video. They I don't watch. Just because he's a popular guy. Yeah, and, and he's in the. The gaming community, like playing video games online, and because he's like famous and a lot of people watch, he gets paid a bunch of money for just, that. Wow, really? No, I think the future of it's like more personal, um, and then you know, uh, and then a few of those girls are gonna become like super famous, and I mean, if like some of them kept it up, like you said, the future, like ten years from now, some of them could be probably making five, ten million dollars a year. If you're going to build up, you know, of that group of top girls, there's going to be some super top girls. Wow, that's inc fucking crazy. But the girls, it takes time to build yourself up, right? And so then... Well, Lana Rose took, like I said, she was like the hottest chick in porn probably in 15 years. And she just took off from day one. Like, like Sasha Gray, when she started with me, I remember she started in May. And within a week, she was booked all the way through September. Star quality? Yeah. she Her first scene was with Rocco. And that guy, yeah. Uh, she has, she had pretty much no limits. Huh. You know you know what Sasha Gray looks like, right? Yeah, yeah. She's yeah. cute. Looks like, a, like an average cute girl to me. Yeah, I mean, Riley Reed is, it, a lot of it's the personality. and mm -hmm. just, Same with Angela Wright. It's like, you got to see her. She looks like real classy. She's got the, and she's dirty, filthy. As, as I, I like to say, or a dirty, filthy whore in all the right ways, and I mean it in the most loving way possible. Uh -huh. yeah. I said this before, you know, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but you know, you have a different perspective than a lot of other people, than performers. Yeah. But yeah, because you have a more open view of the, you know, what's going on. And I think sometimes that 20, 30 years from now, there might be sex robots. Well, well here, if you want to really, I think there's going to be virtual porn stars. Even but now, a lot of companies have contacted me about scanning the girls. But I tell them, like, like one company wanted to scan, like, Angela White. I said, okay, 250 grand. I, well, uh, I go, look, I go, well, we're not going to do this now. I don't care. You're scanning. You're going to be able to use her likeness in the future. Like, 10 years from now, you may have. The technology is not good enough now. Mm -hmm. But 10 years from now it might be, and you're going to be using this girl's likeness to do whatever you want. And that's going to undercut her stuff. But most of them, I just say no. Because really, unless you're going to give me in writing that you're only going to use it for this one project and nothing else, you know, then I don't want them being scanned. So then maybe there's robots and the virtual all together, right? Yeah, and eventually they won't need to scan them. They'll be able to maybe do it off of the, you know, the tape, yeah. So do you think, do you see boy-girl movies, I mean, being finished? I think you're you always going to have it because there's going to be, there's, 
you know, what in Hollywood in the 20s, they used to call the it factor. You know, there's so, like rivalry has it. You know, it's not something you can kind of manufacture. It's just, I, I don't know if you ever seen her or whatever. Well, I know she worked for me. I was on but, the set. But I mean, her personality, and she's just so cute. And I've, I've even said in interviews before, a lot of times people hire Riley, you know, and I'm not a touchy-feely, new-age kind of guy, but she gives off good vibes. You know, just, you know, she glows. And sometimes people just hire her because it's just so nice to have her on set. Really? And there's things like that that you can't recreate with an artificial person, or at least not in the next 10, 20 years. Yeah. That because means- you got to, you ever seen that movie She or Her or whatever? Yeah. Where they got, you know, uh, you got to really... Joaquin Phoenix, right? Yeah, you got to really create the personality to go along with if you really want it to break out. Otherwise, you're just going to have a bunch of robots. Have, you know, Even if they look like people, it's still going to be robots having sex. Oh. And, and hmm. each one, like now, you're going to want them to have a distinct personality. And that's not that easy. Yeah, because you're with all the girls with different personalities. That's interesting. Right, you can't, look at you that. can't yeah. program a personality. Uh-huh. At least not yet. Not yet, but yeah. they're having the, you know, the robots... Yeah, but then each you know each one's not gonna be separate. You, be have you same. watched that uh, Westworld yet? The new the, no, the TV I, show. I watched the two seasons, which made me not too fond of it. No, I mean I'm a, I mean I like the idea. You ever seen the movie? Of course. Though? Yeah. Yeah, I'm a the, West guy. Yeah, because yeah, you know. the guy wrote the book. Yo Brenner, you know. Yeah, the guy who wrote the book, Michael Crichton. You know, you know he was a doctor. No. He was an He wrote the. Um, Jurassic Park, and he wrote all. Oh, oh, I heard that name. Yeah, right? and he he was a MD. He wrote he wrote a lot of, but the idea that they're all robots in the future, um, this is like actually if you, I'm starting to lose it too on the the the, the TV show of uh, uh, Westworld. Westworld. It's getting a little out. There. Is it back? Yeah, it's coming back again. Season now. three in January yeah. or something. Yeah, but uh, at the end of the line, everybody's just killing everybody. Just that. The, uh, but uh, but in the future, if you want it to work, you're gonna have to give each individual their own personality. Yeah, so, so they'll have to be a company that manufactures personality yeah, but, but, and a chip. Yeah, but that's gonna be tough to do one in each one individually. You're gonna probably have to program it individually. Yeah, about a thousand of each one. They're they're originals, but there's so many people. They're almost like originals, kind of <laughs> like an artist, right? <sighs> Thank you, Mark, for coming. No problem. Thank Thank you you. for having me.